city council chambers or by sending an email with your comments to public comment at lincolncity.org. The, the council chambers location is accessible to persons with disabilities. A request for an interpreter for the hearing impaired for a hearing impaired device or the accommodations to persons with disabilities should be made, should be made at least 48 hours in advance for the meeting to Kathy Steer, city recorder, 541-996-1203. Uh, the, the agenda is uh, under uh, under agenda packets and video at lincolncity.org, and an audio recording of this meeting will be available after the meeting at lincolncity.org and probably with video as well. Um, we have the review still going on. So, Mr. Chandler, is that you, sir? Yes, sir, it is. So, I'm going right. to take over everybody's screen if that's okay. Um, okay, you should have up on your screen uh, a whole bunch of writing in red. Okay. Um, so, okay. So in um, I, I included in the packet of material the questions that had. Um, uh, come from my notes in your discussion. I'm not going to go through those. I'll leave those for you to read them. However, there are um, two that I do need to discuss because they have um, potential motions to go with them. Uh, that's not to say that the others won't have, can't become motions, but those were the ones that kind of stood out as I read them as uh, a direction that uh, uh, you may, um, seem to be some pretty strong feelings to go forward with. The first one was to dedicate, well, there was two parts to this. The one question uh, came out was uh, how much of the marijuana revenue comes from our 3% tax versus how much comes from the state shared revenues. Um, the second part of it um, was uh, a discussion about um, uh, using or dedicating the marijuana revenue to the parks and recreation. Um, of the, there's, as I mentioned, there's two sources. Uh, the amount that we receive from the state shared equals $59,000. And, uh, and this is our projected budgeted amount, uh, which is based upon what we have been receiving, a little bit of a history. And then the city has a 3% tax on the marijuana, which... Uh, Ron, may I stop you? Dick, we can hear you guys. <laughs> Will you mute yourself, please? Thank you. All right, Ron. Okay, and then the 3% of the local uh, tax, uh, we're projecting to bring in uh, just under $122,000. Um, uh, another important uh, point to, to bring up is that our general fund is currently transferring $106,650 in the proposed budget to be used in the um, uh, in the in next year's budget for their for their expenses. Uh, so the proposal that we have as a staff is that if you wanted to dedicate uh, uh, the marijuana tax to parks and re and recreation. Um, I would recommend that you dedicate, uh, actually, let me jump back. You specifically said to parks maintenance. Recreation is in the general fund. So the parks has its own fund. I would recommend that you uh, uh, dedicate the 3% or $121,933 to uh, parks, but leave the state shared revenue of $59,000 in the general fund. Um, as I looked at the, the cuts that would be associated in order to make up for the, this lost revenue, because that revenue right now is all accounted for in uh, to take care of uh, general fund expenditures, I would eliminate the, um, uh, the transfer from the general fund to park maintenance fund uh, of $106,650. And then um, we have over the last year or so, We've had uh, a couple of police cadet positions. Uh, they've been they've worked out well, but both positions are vacant right now, and uh, and so I would uh, also then make up the difference between the 121, 
933 and the 16 or 106, 650 by eliminating those positions. Uh, that would transfer the 15,283. The savings on the two cadet positions is more than that. And we would just simply absorb that into the uh, police salary expenses in case they run into some overtime issues. So if you wanted to go that route, a potential motion would be moved to dedicate the 3% local marijuana tax to the park maintenance fund, eliminate the transfer of funds from the general fund to the park maintenance fund, and reduce police salaries by $15,283. Uh, any questions on that before I move to the next part in red? When do you need that motion by? At your last meeting. We don't need that. Uh, you shouldn't even do that this time because there may be other things that come up that conflict with that. Right. The next one was that uh, at least six members, that's how many I wrote down, there may have been more than that, but at least six members expressed an, uh, an interest in eliminating the proposed rate increase uh, for the parks and uh, or for the recreation department. Any loss of that revenue will have to be made up uh, in a cut in expenses because the uh, revenue or the revenue from a rate increase is part of the budget. So um, I asked uh, Jeannie um, it to go through her budget and come up with an additional uh, $30,000 cut um, to make up for the lost revenue. We'll go into these much more in detail when we get to the parks or I'm sorry to the recreation budget but right now, those would be removing the uh, $5,000 from the independent contractors. Those would be your class instructors and then limit the classes accordingly. Um, uh, that is a reduction in a program service, which means it would be an ongoing reduction. Uh, the second would be to remove 6,000 for repair and reseal gutters. That is a deferred maintenance, which means that cost is just, you'd just be kicking that can down the road. The third is remove $5,000 for new drains and grades in the pool. That's a deferred maintenance and all of these we'll discuss in more detail. Uh, so you can see the, the full picture of them. The next one is to remove $1,000 for buying aquatic gear such as noodles, belts, and so forth. Uh, the next one is to remove a recreation program, uh, the half marathon, which is $5,500. I'm going to have some options on that when we get to the recreation because uh, that one actually has a revenue source with it. Um, remove $4,000 for fitness and sports equipment, and that would be a deferred maintenance. And then remove $1,500 uh, for ADA door openers uh, for locker room doors. And again, that will, uh, we'll discuss all of these in detail um, as we get to the recreation budget. Well, let me let me stop you there. I don't, um, you know, I'd like to see if that's even going to be something that's needed. You know, is that if you can go back a slide, is that loss of revenue sole is against the anticipated percentage of self reliance that forty five percent or something? Is that based off of that number, or this is over and above? we project $29,000 from the increased revenue from increasing the fees. It's actually both. Um, we had targeted 42% this, this year of, um, of uh, the expenses to run the community center and the recreation programs to be covered by um, uh, uh, the revenues that come in. Um, and we built the budget according to that. So that if you, uh, d if you decide to not do the uh, rate increase, then the budget will have to be cut by $29,762. And, and if we don't, and if we also agree to continue operating with the 42% self-reliance steps, the standard, right? Um, that would change if we said, no, 35% is fine, then that number goes away. Well, yes, but you still have to cut the budget uh, for whatever, whatever, re whatever revenue you, the rate increase is built into the budget. So if you say, no, we're not going to do a rate increase of this amount or any amount, the budget for next year has to be cut. Why can't it just be simply not, a, 
this projected my my question is maybe challenging and somebody maybe can help me but i'm i'm challenging the fact of do we have to keep improving do we have to keep making more money or can we just remain at a static level of operating and say well it's it's this much and let's get our you know revenue up before we charge more people let's yeah. get our programs and more people to join before we just keep raising prices and you, have it that way if you could increase your membership uh then that's possible uh, either through increased rates or increased membership, that's possible. Um, um, so yes, you could do that. If you fail to increase membership, then at some point in time, you still have to cut the budget. I, I, I'm proposing we don't cut anything and we take a $29,000 hit. Low battery. Question? Yeah, yeah. thanks. That, uh, I see Rick first. Okay. Rick? Uh, yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, I hear what you're saying, Riley. Um, I don't know if we are we actually discussing this right now. It sounded like we were going to discuss later. I, 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 I don't know. I, That's what I mean. I was yeah. trying to get in before we go line by line by line by line. <clears throat> um, I, I actually had a question back on the marijuana tax and the parks maintenance fund, which. Um, Rick, Ron, are we going to come back, back to that? We can. If, if, whatever you'd if, like to do. If it's okay. better, if it makes more sense later, that's that's fine. Um, Right. Yeah, let's, I mean, uh, either way, we're going to come back to this anyway. We can maybe have that then or send it in an email. I don't know. I don't know. You can say it. Go ahead and ask. Well, okay. It, it, this, first of all, I, I thought we had already voted that the marijuana tax was going to the parks or some portion of it anyway. So um, and this sounds like, no, we're, we were actually paying for parks maintenance out of the general fund. Uh, but if we do the marijuana tax for the parks maintenance, then we don't have to do the money out of the general fund, it, if I'm reading that right. But it all kind of sounds like a little bit like a, a shell game. And I don't mean that like in a bad yeah. scam kind of way, but it's like, it feels like we're going, taking a lot of steps to move move the chairs around when we could just leave them where they are and uh why do we have to even go through any of this why not just i think one's a i think one's a transfer and one's a dedication of the the difference i hear debbie trying to say something i'm not sure what we're gaining there okay that was debbie uh <laughs> had a uh you know what i'll i'll uh, Wait i'll take my hand back down yeah okay. all <laughs> sorry right. all right all right so that's good food for thought ron if we i don't know if you'd want to come okay. back to that or well we will discuss those in more detail as we get to all right. the, both the recreation and the all parks right. maintenance right. fund so let me jump ahead uh we finished with streets last time and so we are jumping to uh the water budget and uh, last time, page 40, uh, this is page uh, 35 of your budget. The last time uh, we went through this, just uh, uh, I tried to use the, try to get really cool and use the arrows and found that I, I'm just not cool enough to be able to do that. You made it different colors this time, so that was good. I did. So in this case, <laughs> I have just gone back to what I know, which is Adobe and <laughs> A PDF and I just highlighted the uh, the items that um, that I want to make sure we bring up it's not to say we can't discuss the other items uh, these are just ones that I wanted to bring up because of they were of particular importance um, so the first one actually is let me go back on page 35 of your budget um, this part that I have in yellow um, I made a cut and paste and then forgot to change the numbers. So I will change this, uh, this summary page and, and send it to you with the, with the updates on it. But basically it's the budget increase for the water is $269,893, which is 7%. Personnel um, will increase by $186,936.
and the purse match, which is a, uh, and the purse match is 100 of that, 186, 936. The purse match is equal to 165,798 or 89% of that increase. So I will, um, I will make that change and send it to you so you can change it out in your budget. Thank you. Uh, now jumping into the really good stuff. So um, the water utility budget, this is on page 36. It's line item number 4403001. Uh, it is the utilities uh, that we charge for the water usage. And our projected budget is three thousand or $3,905,800. You notice that's exactly the same as the estimate uh, for the 2019-2020 budget. And the reason for that is that this uh, year continues the policy we have that the rate increase that's proposed with the budget, which is a 4% utility, 4% uh, increase on the utility uh, uh, bills, would go entirely to the, um, the sewer uh, uh, fund. Uh, this is the last year that, we're, that we think we're going to have to do this. And you'll see when we talk about the sewer, the intent of that was to build up enough revenue source that, uh, for, that we would be able to have a million plus to go into capital without having to uh, go out to bonds uh, to do that. And so this will continue that policy for uh, one more year and we'll put on the sewer fund, as you'll see, on a pretty good standing. Okay. Also on uh, page 36 down at the bottom. Oh, and just for note, for those who may be streaming this or watching it or who watch it in the future, I am still including public comment at lincolncity.org on these pages so that if anybody wants to make a comment, uh, they can. Uh, the agenda calls for public comment at the end uh, of this meeting. And if you email it to that address, then I'll go ahead and read it when it comes in. Item number um, 6106014 is the purse retirement. And as I mentioned, um, the purse buy down amount is 165,000. $798 of the, of the $383,010. Okay. Any questions on the, on, yeah. Don't see any. Just if everybody remembered to use the little clicky and raising thing, that way I can see who wants to talk. Councilor or chair, uh, Susan had her hand up. Oh. I, well, how about it? Hey, Susan. Uh, yeah, finally, I got all those buttons pushed. Because um, I, I just can't see everybody's face. I only have the little. Right. Stuff, right. Um, the line item that you just referred to, Mr. Chandler, what page is that on? I, I didn't find it. 36. Page 36 at the very bottom. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, the next items that we have are on page 37. Uh, the first one that I wanted to bring up is the area of uh, contracted services. Uh, that is $107,983. And what I wanted to do is just point out the, the bulk of those funds. Uh, the first part is um, 74,483 is for the contracted service for meter reading. Now I bring this up because as we look to the future, especially once we're out of this um, uh, uh, policy of, of having the revenues go to the sewer fund, one of the things that uh, we want to propose is to doing a really a rate, uh, uh, an electronic reader system where um, it doesn't require people to drive through it just picks it up off some uh, off your uh, dishes and, and antennas. And uh, there's some really great advantages to doing that. We're not proposing that in this budget, but
but I bring this up, first of all, because it's just a large expense, but also to note that uh, that is something we will be bringing to you in the future. The other... Um, uh, the, oh, Kevin, uh, Kevin has a question. Ron, please. Ron, what's the cost of that? Debbie, do you want to answer that? Or Lila? I know we've talked about it. The estimate that Lila got was about $2 million, and um, we do think um, with the savings in, in the reader meter that we could have a decent uh, return on, uh, or what's that called, number of years of payback, <laughs> return on investment, number of years. Um, I was originally kind of thinking about using some general fund reserves, but after this recent stuff, I would I'd probably look at some kind of a loan on that. Okay, thank you. The other part of this $27,000 of this goes to our water billing uh, company, Cassell, uh, which does all of the billing for us. And then finally, 20,000 of this uh, is for just miscellaneous engineering services that may come up throughout the year. That's funny. Cassell, is that's the contracted out, that's out of state, right? Yes. And have we, and I think we've asked, and it's come up a couple of different times about in-house or local or something like that. And I just don't recall what that was last, last time we talked about it. Debbie, I'm gonna turn this to you again. Uh, I'm not sure that there's a government accounting system comparable to Cassell that uh, is in-state. Right. We've been using Cassell for many, 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 many years. Uh, well, <laughs> I should phrase that. I think we converted over in about 2005, maybe. It was a little before I, before I came. I just remember Judy asking about our. I, I thought, Judy, you were asking about it. So. Um. I, I, I remember some discussion about, um, so uh, more recently, we outsourced the utility payment uh, lockbox, and that um, was with a company that Cassell partners with, and that is also out of state. And I remember there was some discussion about that that change, um, largely because when, when using that, when people uh, mail their payments, and it's not going here to link to Lincoln City, it's going to an out, outside state. Um, and we're the only, and we, and this has come to me through home sales. We're the only city in the county that puts the puts the water bill as a lien on the house. Is that right? And that I know has caused a lot of problems with closing because one it, it isn't done right. And is that because we sent it out of state? I don't believe we lien a house unless there's um, you know a past due amount if, of if it's, if it's, certain amount. If it if it times right, then it shows up that way. That's what I've. That's what I've been told. So, but, but, I don't think we do it for like a 30 day. I, I, uh, let me let you know. Let me get the detail on that. And when we do lean for water, and 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 I'll give it to Ron to put in his report. Yeah, I think it was just as a, out, just as a, if it hasn't been paid by the date of sale, then it's recorded as a lien. How's okay, let, let me get the detail on yeah. it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Thanks. I'm typing the, my notes as we go so that I don't have to write them a second time. So give me just a second while I save this. Okay. The next item that we have is in the water conservation, which is item number 6205007. Um, uh, this includes a um, fifteen thousand dollars for a, a a conservation ad campaign to meet our water resources benchmark. Um, that's an increase from fifteen hundred dollars. And I wanted Lila to take a few minutes and just explain what that ad campaign is about. Thank you, Mr. Chandler. Um, so that one is for um, the, we've been involved with the Mid-Coast Water um, Shed Council. And so this one is actually, we um, are partnering with many other cities and doing a conservation um, plan. And 
and we will have an ad campaign with that as well but it's um, a really good um, contract for us to have everybody be kind of on the same page all along the coastal areas and so it's a, it's a good way for us to not have to pay a huge um, consultant fee for a program like this and we've kind of struggled with it in the past and it is part of our um, water agreement so it's, it's a great program this line item also includes um, a watershed uh, stream restoration project and then sixty thousand dollars of this is a pass-through that goes to the salmon drift creek uh, state it's a state grant and it goes to the salmon uh, uh, Creek uh, organization. Um, and then coming down to treatment plant maintenance, which is 6211050. Uh, I'm going to mention them and let, uh, and let uh, Lila explain them a little bit. This includes $16,000 for replacing of a raw water and surface scatter, and I'll let her describe what that is. $3,000 for equipment rental for an intake maintenance and $2,000 for an interface machines for plant control. So I'll let Lila jump in and, and discuss that. Okay, we're, um, we're replacing some instrumentation on the um, raw water intake at the water plant. And then the surface scatter is a screen, um, dosage for, so it checks the organic matter in the in the water and so it helps us with uh, our dosing so it's a uh, turbidimeter and just looks at the you know how much dirt or leaves or um, turbidity is in the water as it gets stirred up from the rain or a big storm um, and so those are those are both fairly old and that's what they're replacing and then I think we have um, the other two were uh, new new operator interface machines for the plant control and they're eight years old and they're really important computers so it's time to time to replace those the rest of the expenses associated with this line item are just your miscellaneous uh, uh, system uh, treatment plant maintenance cost. There's nothing in, a, in those that just jumps out as a large expense. Um, any questions on page 37 before I move to the next page? I see we've reduced our pump pump station maintenance. That's pretty, so it looks, it looks pretty good. From 25,000 to 5,000. No? And those are specific items, you know, every year there's certain pumps and, and certain pieces of equipment you have to replace and so we just that that varies every year from what type of, of equipment we need to work on cool. um, Riley? Uh, yeah. Both oh, yes oh. yes Hinton yes Miss Hinton um, I have a question which is um, Ron just above the last um, item that you were talking about the pump, the pump station maintenance. I was just curious. Um, it's only five thousand five hundred dollars. Is that adequate? Lila, I'll turn that over to you. There's two. There's two expenses that are associated with this. One is the cathodic control inspection and maintenance, and the other is uh, just some electrical and technical support. Yes, because the year re the year before we um, rebuilt some valves at the um, 19th Street. Well, let's see, it was 19th Street and West Devils Lake Road, so that's that's our one um, closer to the hospital, our pump station over there. So we worked worked on that the year before, and let's see, we did um, some extra generator service at Roads Inn, Bayview, and Hunters. And so those were those were all done last year. We did a security system for Rhodes Inn Pump Station, and so so we're just doing like Mr. Chandler mentioned, minor electrical and technical support. 
and that's 3,500 and then the cathodic um, control inspection. And we normally have um, divers come in and, and clean our tanks and, and look at all of that equipment. Is that, is that good, Ms. Hinton? Yep, thank you. Mr. You're welcome. Mr. Anderson or Mr. Norakis? Yes, I have a question on regarding number 6202099 miscellaneous permits, almost $6,000 increase. Now, let me get back up to that one. I'll give you the de detail on that. Thanks. Okay. Much. Okay, so we have our, our annual Oregon Health Association, Association water system fee. We have the Oregon State Fire Marshal fee. Um, we also have a DEQ fee and um, Oregon pressure valve permit. And are these more than usual, Lila? Yeah, they, they change, they vary. Okay. It and looks like it's like a two year, like a two year interval, there's more fees and then less fees. Right, and, then, and some, sometimes they, they talk about um, different legislature coming in and, and different um, things that we have to do. And some years we have, you know, copper and, and um, it's like a two year program. So they do go on and off. And going down the page, Lila, 6213001 cleaning allowance. Yes, I'm not quite sure what happened to my cleaning allowance line item unless that was an area that we were trying to cut. That's that's the only thing I could figure out on that one without talking to Debbie and Ron. Okay, and one more at the very bottom, 6222010 chemicals, considerably less. Yes, and, and that goes toward our water conservation and our water leak detection. And so whenever, whenever we're finding these leaks, we're not producing as much water. And so the chemical costs go down. Oh, very good. Thank you. Cool. Anybody else have any questions? All right, Mr. Chandler. Okay. So going to page 38, um, uh, the point that I want to just simply make out or make to you on this one is that this maintains the six hundred thousand uh, dollar contingency or fund balance, which is what we had identified was necessary for this fund. And that's item number six seven eight zero 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 one. That's the only item I had on this page to, to discuss. Mr. Anderson, do you still have a question? No? Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ron. On page 39. That's not it. You got it, Dick. Thanks. There we go. Um, okay, there are several points that I want to bring up on this one. In many ways, these pages are actually the most important pages that you have in your budget because they're your financial forecast. So um, where you see it in yellow with the number one, um, begin again, beginning next year, fiscal year, fiscal year 2022 is when we'll start seeing the revenues come, the revenues from any increases coming back to the water fund. And, uh, and we're projecting an annual increase of 4%. Now you'll notice then down at number two that the annual increase beginning in 20, fiscal year 2023 is more than 4%. Again, not significantly more, but it is more. 
And that is, as we have discussed with some other funds, a trend that we really need to, to reverse on that. Um, you have a, um, uh, in item number three, which is down at the bottom, um, that because of the difference in the revenues increases and the expenditures increasing more, you can see that your, your, um, uh, your changes to fund balance is going down um, and the impact that that has on it. It picks back up um, because you have some bond payments that are coming up in 23, 24. You also have a capital lease payment in number item five that drops off after fiscal year 2025. And then you can see that beginning really in 25 and 26, you'll have somewhere about $1.5 million that uh, is available for capital. Um, and, and then maintains your, brings your, brings your uh, fund balance back up to above the $600,000 level. Uh, so we do have a little bit, not as much as in the general fund trend to reverse in the water fund, but by and large, it is a trend that we need to change uh, and to reverse that change. Any questions on our forecast? See any. The next, um, uh, the water capital funds are, are there's um, three water capital funds. So if you'll turn to uh, page 41, um, they're all summarized together and um, in, this, in this document. Um, it summarizes them so that uh, it's easier to Mr. look at, but they are spread out in different funds. Mr. Chandler, may I stop you for a moment? Mr. Anderson? Yeah, or Mr. Yeah. Norakis? Norakis here. Yes, sir. On page 39, at the top of the page, Mr. Chandler, you've got percentages. Percentages indicating what? Um, that is a percentage increase in the revenue. So in other words, when you see 4%, we would be proposing a 4% increase in rates. And on the right-hand side, we've got a different set of percentages. Yeah, that, those are percentages that are based on each line item specifically. So you'll see the meter installation, it's looking at a 3%. Uh, miscellaneous revenues at, at a 3% and then the 4% deals with the rate increases. The other thing that you have on the right hand side are the increases as you can see in expenditures. Um, we, have, we have tied the um, operation expenditures to whatever increase we're seeing. So those are coming out at 3%, but you can see that in salaries, but especially in benefits is where it gets out of whack a little bit. And you see that. And how, in about, and how about at the bottom of the page, sir? Six hundred thousand dollars in accounts receivable. That's a note that I added this year because it helps explain why we have um, a minimum ending fund balance of six hundred thousand because. Um, of that fund balance, 600, we've got 600,000 in accounts receivable and 250,000 in inventory. So it's not cash. It's either in the, I just added that note for additional clarification on why we need a fund balance in there. $600,000 worth of bills that people have not paid. Yes, we do an accrual at the end of the year. At the end of the fiscal year, we do an accrual for what we for the for what we have billed uh, for July for June usage, but haven't received yet. In that that revenue ends up in the fund balance, but it's it's a cash flow basically. It's kind of a one month cash flow, or I don't know if it's one month. Um, that doesn't that doesn't necessarily mean that these are uh, several months back due, and they're all going to be shut off. That would include anybody that is. Uh, that is in the, their current month is due and they haven't paid it yet. Yeah, it's one month plus any past due. Thank you. The, like, it's like the average amount that the city receives in water bill payments. 
Well, it looks like it's about four million a year. So that's about three hundred and thirty thousand average per month. So. I'm gonna keep bringing it up. If we increase the TRT to ten, can we put some of that? You can't put no. You're really re the state's really clamped down on what you can spend TRT money on. <laughs> And the other part of that is that if you increase it by half a percent, it will bring in about $36,000. Half a percent of TRT is $36,000 a year? Yes, sir. Well, well that's good to know. You put, it's still up there, Dick, so I don't know if you want to have another question. <laughs> All right, Mr. Chandler, thank you very much. Okay, if you'll go to page 41. You'll see that there are three um, projects uh, for this coming uh, fiscal year. Um, $640,000 for the Southeast Ore Pump Station replacement. That's a two-year project. Uh, with it uh, uh, crossing over into fiscal year 2022. $250,000 for the um, waterline replacement, Northeast Yacht and Northeast 32nd to 30th. Uh, $400,000 uh, for a water uh, treatment plant generator replacement. And then you have one more on page 43, which is $400,000 um, for uh, 50, Southeast 51st Schooner Creek Road. Lila, do you want to give any more information on those? Sure. The um, Southeast 51st will go from Highway 101. Um, all the way back to 48th place, and it's replacing a 14-inch old steel line. And so that project would be would be a great improvement for for that area, and then it would also have some street street improvement at the same time, since we're digging since we would be digging it up. And that that street's in pretty bad condition. And then the ore pump station. Um, that one's up off of Southeast 14th and Orr, and it's a, an old older station. It was built underground, and it's kind of it's falling apart, and it's a fire. It's for fire, and so our proposal, we're, we're doing a modeling project of all the water lines, but our proposal is to um, move that pump station up to the reservoir site and we have room for it up there, and then just reverse the piping and the pipe flows. And so we're doing the study on that part of it right now. And the yacht um, water line replacement is for um, adding hydrants and upgrading some two inch line that should have been put in as six inch years ago. Now, that's pretty old system, it's probably 30, I mean, I imagine that was put in 30 or more years ago. And then the treatment plant generator, I was trying to find the age on, on that one, but it's, it's outside and it has, um, it's really old. It's one of our, our risk factors, I believe, because if the generator doesn't come on, then we're not pumping water to town um, during a power outage. And it has, it's had quite a few maintenance things. We, you know, we keep a close eye on it and check on, have it um, worked on on a regular basis, but it's still just very old. It's you think, time to replace it. Do you think we'd be able to sell it? Yes, we always um, try and sell them oh, or, cool. or the new, whoever gets the bid will give us reimbursement on them. Nice. Because they, they run, they don't run that much, but they, you know, still get very old. And so they actually can work in other, you know, other Capacity. areas, other capacities, right? Right, cool, cool. I think that's, I think that's about it. 
That uh, brings us to the end of the water fund. Are there any questions on the water budget before I move on to sewer? Dick, I'm saying, or Chester, is that you or that's just from before? No, okay. <laughs> hey, if you go to page 50, Yeah. Okay. On page 50, again, the uh, revenues from the billing service are four million are projected to be four million five hundred four thousand seven hundred twenty-eight, which is significantly higher than the uh, estimate for the end of fiscal year 2020, and that's again because all of the we're proposing again that all of the um, uh, utility billing increase go to the sewer fund. Okay. And as I mentioned, uh, we're anticipating that this will be the last year uh, that that will need to occur. Um, down at the bottom of the page, you have retirement. Again, that includes the purse match, which accounts for $154,009. Um, I'm sorry, that's the increase and of the increase purse match is $146,156 or 94% of the increase. You know, Ron, if I may stop you, I keep seeing the $742 unemployment reimbursement in a few different departments. Did you talk about that already? We haven't, but Debbie, do you want to jump in on that? Yes, you're seeing a... 742 oh. It's unemployment so, that's a year in estimate and you've seen it in a couple places and I, I presume it's a public works employee because they're split one third one third one third between water street and sewer yeah this it's been this is the third department that I've seen it in so. yeah hopefully you're not seeing it more than three otherwise I'll have to <laughs> I'll let you know that's why I was like okay <laughs> hmm yeah that sounds a little weird <laughs> Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Okay. Um, then down under the contracted services, uh, which is item number 6201119. Uh, I'm going to make that a little bit larger. That looks great. There. Um, uh, the uh, $31,068 is, is the sewer bills portion of the meter reading contract and $22,000 is the sewer funds portion of the uh, Cassell uh, billing program. Um, the one that is of most note is $20,000 for a consultant slash attorney. Uh, for the NPDES permit for the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, Lila can explain it in detail, but what we are facing with our treatment plan is some additional testing, an additional uh, eliminating of, um, uh, of uh, minerals, and uh, increasing the temperature that is coming out of the tree, or decreasing the temperature that is coming out of the treatment plant. Um, we're expecting that we'll need to spend $20,000 uh, for our consultant to work on that. Uh, we are anticipating that we will spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in the future to accommodate uh, DEQ's um, uh, new standards that uh, they're imposing. Lila, do you want to give a little more detail to that? And you covered that pretty well, and so we'll be using um, Kennedy Jinx is our consultant that's been working with us on biosolids and, and also um, the MPDS permit as we've gone along. And so it's, it's a placeholder. I'm hoping we don't have to spend probably all of that money, but we'll keep it as, as tight as we can and, and get through that process of the permit. This has the potential of being one of the biggest financial challenges the sewer fund will face. 
um, as it will require significant, it could require significant investment in, in, order, to, um, in order to meet those new standards. Dredging, we've looked at dredging too and all that there. Because I'm sure that over time, the deforestation has increased the bottom level, uh, the natural level of the bottom of the creek. So whereas 10 years ago, you probably had two feet. Now you might have 10 inches. I mean, I drive over that bridge all the time and it seems as though the, it's getting shallower and shallower. So is, isn't that part of it? Yeah, it's it's tidal. And so we're we're in a, you know, that estuary situation that we're in we have that mixing zone of the fresh water and the um, seawater and so all of that has been um, looked at in our 2004 uh, master plan and so that does come into effect with the temperature and the temperature is just is such a minor um, amount but we're going we're looking at many different options on that so I, I'm sure we'll be having some workshops and discussing oh. discussing the whole permit it's okay. It's timed out so that we have we have some time in the permit. And then our water master plan is going to be updated. 16 years seems quite a long time ago. Yes, we have been actually amending our um, master plan, but it, it's time and that's part of this modeling. It's the very first part of it, the water model that okay. we paid about $50,000 for. And nice. so that'll be able to give us a kickoff to, to an updated water master plan. That's great. Great to hear. All right, which, where are we at now, Ron? Okay, um, any questions on page 50 before we move to the next one? Okay, on page 51, uh, one of the things I wanted to point out is that you have Item number 6202101 and 6202102, those have been combined into, into one. There was really no need to have two separate line items on that. So those were combined. Um, and then if you go down to um, 6210025, uh, this is the um, infiltration and inflow. That is the program we have been working on to prevent water from coming in to the system. Um, and, uh, and we continue to invest in that program uh, um, each year. And if we can increase it, to increase it, it again, is one of those preventative maintenance programs that pays off in the long run, especially on the, uh, on the, um, uh, the impact it has on the wastewater treatment plant. Is that, is that more, that's infiltration and inflow into, through piping, not necessarily through sewer caps? Do we have an estimate between the two? Lila, do you know the breakdown on that? I don't know that we have a specific breakdown, but you know, we do our smoke testing and, and get letters out to people that have issues. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but manholes, Manholes can leak, and so that's what this money is for. We're sealing manholes. Um, we TV all of the sewer pipes so we can see where larger leaks are or where they've, um, you know, come across, come apart at a joint. And those are points of infiltration. And so um, we TV. We have our TV van, and we TV all of the sewer pipes, take pictures of them, and then go back and review them. And that's how we start picking out some of the, the locations to seal those pipes up. And so we have someone come in instead of digging up the road, they can um, go through the manholes and seal the portions of the pipe that need to be sealed, you know, without replacing a whole pipe or digging everything up. Will, um, the, will the sewer department be releasing video footage and like a sped up time frame so we can travel through the city? Uh, through sure. the sewer lines. It is riveting <laughs> video, I tell you. Hey, you put it fast <laughs> enough and put some music behind it. I bet you people will watch it. <laughs> they just might, but they probably wouldn't see the leak. I think we might be able to hey. use transient room tax for funds for that hey. purpose hey. The video. <laughs> city of Lincoln City could have a, a YouTube channel making money too. I mean, hey, monetization is everywhere. 
Absolutely. So we just keep monitoring the system. We do reports to DEQ on how many uh, miles of line we've TV'd and, and um, what repairs we have done. That's something that we have to report on with the NPDES permit. So it's, it's a good program. If anybody's interested in seeing more about it, we can sure do a, a little tour or let you know when they're I'm, out there. I am down. You put a hard hat on me, I'll be right next to the truck looking in the lines. <laughs> okay. Okay, also on this page, we have item number 6211050, which is treatment plant maintenance. You'll notice a, an increase from $92,000 to $117,000. Um, the, um, I'm going to have to have Lila explain this, uh, 20,000 of that increase is for SBR air rack membrane. So Lila, will you discuss that? Yes. So those are our sequencing batch reactors and we just have screens that are wearing out. You know, it's been eight, eight years since they were in there and so they, they just, it's just um, metal and it wears out. So the, that's one of the things we're doing. I'm trying to make sure I get all of these here. Um, we're doing the effluent um, filter cloth replacement. And I think this is the first time we've done that since the plant's been upgraded. So just so many of these items in the plant start to wear out. They're all the mechanical more the mechanical parts. And we're doing um, 72, 72 UV lamps and parts. And we have that listed at, um, let me see, $20,000. So there's quite a few things that make up that, that number for the treatment plant maintenance. We have building maintenance down from 45,000 to 15. Item number 621001. Was that a savings or a cut? Hang on just one second. I'm just getting to that. 621001. And also, Ron, on a totally side note, is it, could you tell us or does it, is it public knowledge? Each column, you know, it's, what those represent. I would love to know that, you know. Um, on So you're looking at the screen on your left, you have the actual, well, Lila looks up the-, the Hold on, let me, let me specify the actual six, two, that six, two, one, zero, zero, one, each one, each number means something else. It does. Um, these are account numbers. So if you look at the top of this page, you'll see 241-000. That is the department, in this case, the sewer utility operation. Um, you'll notice in the general fund, you might have, the, instead of 000, and we'll come to this, you'll have another number. That is a department within the fund. And then the, the numbers that you see associated with the individual expenses, 6201121 at the top, those are individual line item numbers or expense account numbers. Those are standard that are used throughout, uh, throughout government uh, um, uh, accounting. So you should find similar numbers. So, in like any six, you go to. so like 6210010 is always going to be system maintenance. Yeah, a better one to look at, another good one to look on that one is 6203020 telephone. That will be the same number for every department. Okay. Thank and you for how, that. Thank yeah, you for that's that. how Debbie's able to look up how much telephone are we spending for the whole city. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Okay. All right. So the system maintenance, the building maintenance was down thirty-five thousand. And actually just the next, you know, you have that plus the sludge removal, if we can talk about those. Those three things, system maintenance you just talked about, or did you just talk yeah. about? Well, it's, it's sewer line repairs, system okay. maintenance. Okay. And then sludge, we have um, the centrifuge maintenance, and then we're also um, out of that line item. It, that's where we haul, and that 
comes to around 250,000. So we're, the cost for hauling and all of our treatment and everything for the biosolids is the same as it would have been if we were taking it to fields. Yeah. Oh. So that, those are our dump fees is, to take the biosolids to Coffin Butte. After our center, hmm, I'm, I'm still just trying to see a, a reduction in cost and we're not there yet from, in my head I have, we'll clean up the, the ponds, we'll, we'll make it drier and then we'll put it to the landfill and then all of that will reduce our costs in some way and I'm just, I'm not seeing that. Well, there's, yeah, I, there's a, a third step um, and if I understand where you're going, it's when do we have a product that can actually be sold or given away? Well, I know that, that is that's the class B or the class A. I know we have to dry it much, much tighter and drier than that, but you know, our, I'm just trying to understand when, when will we have those ponds empty and that, that cost lowered? Oh, I see. Uh, so Lila, how much of your budget is a result of cleaning out the sludge ponds? Um, hang on a second. So what we did with the sludge ponds, we budgeted to buy um, a dredge and then we were going to um, slowly, slowly put that uh, biosolids that are in the lagoons back in the plant, but it's a long process. And so what we have budgeted, what council approved last year was to get a dredge and we're still looking at, at that, especially with our new um, discharge permit that's, that's out there right now. So we're doing some more study on it. And the, co the cost to haul to Coffin Butte is really the same as it was to haul to the fields. So we haven't, we haven't had a price reduction in getting rid of our biosolids and we still have the biosolids in the um, lagoons and so we're working on that with you know possibly doing it with this dredge but there are so many other things that are coming into play with this new mpds permit we don't want to spend money unless we you know really know all the details and what we might need to use those lagoons for for temperature control. I was gonna say, in theory, couldn't we use those to reduce the temperature, then put it out and then meet the NPDES certification? Yeah, that, and that's exactly what we're working on and, right. and why we have some consultant money in there to look at all these options. Okay. And when will we know that? Well, probably within a six month period. Of like the equation of reducing, you know, taking it out, treating it and discharging and mm -hmm. then using it like that will be six months before we have that equation figured out yes i mean we we know right now how to um you know if we have a dryer that gets mm -hmm. it to the point of uh, class a then we don't have to haul it anymore so we just have to to manage those dollars and see which way we can go and and what we have to do to meet our um, new permit and forgive me but i in my head we have two centrifuges we were looking at that. Mitch, I see you. I'll get uh, in a second. But did, we don't currently have two centrifuges now. We were going to no. do that, but now we don't? Yes, we do have the second centrifuge, and we're kind of putting things on hold because of funding, unknown funding. But we do, we're, we're doing the design right now for installing the centrifuge. We have the centrifuge at the plant, and it's going to go in an existing building. And we have to do a little bit of structural on that. And then we'll um, be able to put it in. But it's, it's right now, it's, it's a little bit of a funding thing because we're, you know, watching to see what happens to our, our billing. I mean, are we going to sell production. it if, if it doesn't work out, you know? No, it, it'll definitely work out. It's just a matter of getting it um, finished up and in the building. Mm, all right. Thank you. Mitch, what, what do you got, buddy? I have people telling me we're not being broadcast on the web page right now. That's it. Tony, I think that's a you to fix that one. Yeah, Tony, I'm aware. 
we're on. This is Tony. The stream's down, and uh, we have a technical issue that I probably won't be able to resolve tonight. Um, it's broadcasting on Channel 4. Uh, the stream's down. So Do we need to stop the, stop the meeting and then restart it? No, no. The meeting is the meeting's, uh, it's being recorded. It's being broadcast. It's just a problem with the stream. I um, mean, would, would stopping everything and restarting it help? No, sir. It's a technical issue. Okay. And so, um, and so we're doing what we can to fix it. Is it being digitally recorded? Yes, sir. So then it, it will be after the fact. Uh, we will we'll have it up tomorrow morning. Um, cool. We're trying to get it running again. All right, just call all your friends, Mitch, and put them on speakerphones. That way they can hear. Right, put them on channel four. Yeah. And I might point out that um, we have been uh, just accepting any public comment throughout the weeks uh, in between meetings as well. So if somebody wants to send something to us, um, uh, between now and the next meeting, that's fine, and we'll make sure we read that into into the the record. Thank you, Mitch. Thank you, Ron. Okay, page fifty-two. Um, chemicals. You'll see an increase that it's uh, jumped significantly up to a hundred thousand um, dollars. The note that I have on this and um, is the addition of uh, magnesium hydroxide. That's added into the uh, into the influent, and I'm going to let Lila explain that one as well. Yes, that one's um, an, an increase that we've had to do just to keep our our pH levels um, correct, and it just depends on on the plant functioning. I can give you probably a little more information on that, but. Um, it's definitely been an increase in costs for for that chemical, and we do go out and look for, you know, we check all different um, vendors and try and keep that within range, but to meet some of our uh, requirements, DEQ requirements, we're having to use more of that hydroxide. And again, I know we've talked about it a few times. Is that something? A, uh, a successful media campaign can reduce the pH of the sewage or not? No, not on, not on this. It's, it's something, it's, it's like a, the magnesium, it's like a pepto for the plant. And, and so it's slowly dripped into the system. So it just depends on, so yes, probably um, the fats, oil and grease campaign can help all those things can help to a point cool. and we really haven't seen a big reduction with um, the reduction in motel rooms which was surprising so we've been watching we've actually been able to analyze a lot of things during this time when we don't have that many people here oh cool. I would love um, would that be a presentation that you could give the council yes we could do that when we when we talk about the NPDS permit cool. that'd be great I would I would like that um, on item number 6320201, which is other equipment, um, we have $50,000 that is going for the HVAC replacement at the treatment plant, uh, $172,400 for the dredge, dredging and pump. Uh, this is a carry forward project uh, um, from, from the current year. We have $40,000 for a UV disinfection system and $46,000 for a D-ragger pump, pumps at the Wacoma, at Wacoma and Nelscott uh, pump stations. Lila, do you want to explain any of those a little bit further? Um, well, the dredge and pump we already talked about. Um, we have a collections vector hose. Um, cleaner so it's a, a piece of equipment it's one one time purchase um, the uv disinfection system is um actuators and programming and it's a one-time one-time purchase and then we have uh d-raggers and we tested one of these out at wacoma and because we had all those pumps ragging up as we've talked about and so those were doing at three pump stations with Coleman L. Scott and Third Street. 
and so that's a one-time purchase and and what it does it reverses the the pumps so they de-rag themselves instead of uh, the crews having to take them all apart and pull all these rags out of the the pumps and we have you know three huge pumps in each one of our major pump stations which is um, southeast third street nelscott and Macoma. Any questions on this page before I move on? Okay. Um, so uh, let me shrink that a little bit. So this is the uh, sewer operation forecast of our financial plan. Uh, this is this is actually really good news with uh, uh, as you look to this. Um, again, if you look at the, up at the top where that's the yellow and then the one that item is you can see that the um, this this year is the last year of uh, applying all of the utility rate increase to the sewer fund so you'll see that go back again to an anticipated four percent increase in revenues um, um, the if you go down to item number two uh, you'll see that um, the revenue or the expected increase on expenditures is equal to the revenues. Uh, very positive news on that. And then you'll see from item three, how we will be increasing from $1 million that's available for capital through a transfer up to 1.5 million by 2028. So you can see the effects of a couple of things happening in this. One is some debt service that is being paid off uh, or some leases that are being paid off, and also um, the the effects of the of the revenue increase that we devoted to that. I personally, I consider that to be one of the real uh, gems of policies that you guys recommended to the council, and they adopted it. It has really helped put the sewer fund on a better financial footing. Okay. Any questions on the sewer operations financial plan? Um, if you'll turn to page uh, 55, again, as with the water fund, the capital funds are contained in, or the capital projects are contained in multiple funds. So um, in this one, it's a summary of your capital financial plan. Okay, item number one uh is the installation of the screw press lila just spoke to that a little bit it's a two-year project we now have the screw press in hand and, and now is the installation portion of it item number two is the upgrade to the spyglass pump station item number three is the uh, is a uh, sewer line replacement uh, in the nelscott sewer uh, with the design taking place um, in this year and then the construction beginning next year. Uh, this year being 2021, construction being 2022. Uh, you have a, an item number four, which is $120,000 for three variable frequency drives. Item five is a three-year project uh, upgrade in the Southeast third pump station. Item six is the Holmes Road pump station upgrade and it is also a three-year project. And then if you go to page 57 on one other uh, this, the fund, you have $150,000 uh, for next year for the Esther Lee pump station upgrade and that is a three-year project. Um, Lila, do you have anything you would like to add on these projects? And then uh, committee members, if you have any questions. That will wrap up sewer, yeah. by the way. Um, I don't think so. I think we already talked about most of these. Um, the pump stations that you see for 100,000, those are for design. And these are complicated um, pump stations, especially Esther Lee. It's very difficult location it's right down at the beach level and there's not much room to work on um, 
construction on that one. And so we'll be using as many um, wet well parts and things that we can in that. But the designs, uh, we're just estimating the 100,000 and we'll put those out to bid with our, our consultants that we have um, already screened. And, and so that's why you're seeing the larger numbers going into the second and third year. I don't think there's too much else to really explain on those unless you have a specific question on any of them. I think so. Anybody? Okay. Um, if you, I'm sorry, we have one more thing in the sewer. If you'll go to page um, 60, I don't know, 62, I believe it is. Uh, this is the, yeah, 62. This is the information about our debt. Um, we have, I don't know where number one is on this, but we have two uh, outstanding debts for the sewer fund. Both debts um, are uh, are supported by property taxes. Um, the first of those uh, ends in 2026, and the second one continues on past this uh, this date. Um, the the first one's balance is uh, at the end of 2019 is three million six hundred seventy four thousand six hundred eighty four dollars, and the the one that's uh, payment of 795, 760,000 this year, then 795, 830, and so forth. As of June 30th, 2019, the outstanding debt was nine million six hundred twenty thousand dollars. Okay, any questions on sewer before we leave that and go to Lincoln Square? Okay, if you go to page, if you go to page 65. Okay, uh, under revenue, a couple things to point out. Um, the revenue for the uh, Lincoln Square and Lincoln and the Lincoln Square Fund is a, essentially to cover the cost of running the city office building. Um, and um, uh, there's two sources of revenue, primarily two sources of revenue. The first is through lease payments. So, for example, McKay's pays us a lease amount. The uh, Career Tech pays us a lease amount. Um, and so. Um, Salmon Drift Creek Water uh, pays us a lease amount. And so um, you can see under items 460, 1060, and 460, 1950, those are the two primary revenue sources that we receive from rent from our tenants. The other source of the revenue is from transfers from the different funds. General Fund, big, um, Visitors of Convention Bureau Street, Water and Sewer. That's the cost that is associated with running this building that each of those different funds has to pay. Uh, in, uh, in essence, um, uh, we, uh, we who are working here are the clients of the Lincoln Square operations. Any questions on revenue for Lincoln Square? Uh, oh, sorry, I didn't need to go back down to here. Um, if you look to the bottom, um, item number. Oh, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Chan Mr. Chandler, may I stop you? Yes, Ms. Oxenhall. Um, I just had a question on the Lincoln City lease and the reimbursement tenant. Why are those different? Debbie, do you want to answer that question?
Debbie, we can't hear you. Oh, sorry. The difference between the Lincoln Square lease payment and the reimbursement? Tenant, yeah. Yeah, one is um, one is the rent, and then the reimbursement, I believe, is for the property tax. Ron, is, is there a property tax uh, line item below for about that amount on the expense side? <laughs> or, or, <laughs> Where are you looking, Debbie? Boop, boop, oh. boop, 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 boop. You know, I, you know what, Ron? I'm sorry, I'm wrong on that. Um, I, I think they both go into the same light item. We have other tenants in Lincoln Square besides uh, McKay's. Right, he mentioned McKay's, Career Tech, Salmon, Drift Creek, and I know Backpack. Yeah, so I think the Lincoln Square, le you know, I'd be, instead of just saying what I think, let me find out and I will give it to you for, give you okay. actual information. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you, no worries. Thank you, for your, thank you for your honesty, Debbie. <laughs> I, you know, this is too much to know everything. Yeah. You're, you're very talented, but thank you for that. <laughs> sure. Okay. Also on page 65, 610-6014. Um, that includes the purse match of that $36,039, um, $15,564 is uh, for the purse match. Okay. The expenditures, I'm moving to the next page, the expenditures remain relatively the same um, uh, as they were in the prior year. Um, and so I don't have a lot to jump into as far as expenditures go, unless you have questions on that. Anybody? No? Okay. Hello? If you go to page 67, uh, this is again the financial plan for this fund. And um, again, you can see that uh, the um, uh, the revenues or the expenditures are growing at a faster place than um, the revenues. And so uh, ultimately, again, that will require us to uh, make adjustments, uh, which will put more pressure on all of the other funds to support this. So that's a running theme that you're going to hear from Debbie and me until we figure out actually how to, how to reverse that trend. Any questions on Lincoln Square? Um, excuse me. No. Okay. Um, the facilities capital fund is established on the basis of use is uh, through our charter um, on the use of transient room tax for capital projects. Um, initially began with uh, paying debt on this building. And then it is expanded to be able to use the uh, funds for um, other capital projects. Uh, two items of note on page 68. Uh, the first is um, item number 4105010. I bring that up just to, uh, just to um, identify that this fund is dependent upon the transit room tax, which makes it, um, uh, one of the more elastic funds that we have or revenue sources that we have and can be subject to change. For example, we know that we're losing at this point somewhere around $635,000 a month in transient room tax. And so it would have an effect on, on this budget. Uh, the other part that I wanted to point out is um, this budget is also now paying for a debt you see at the bottom of $617,275. That's a new debt to us now, and that is to cover the costs of the new police building. Okay. This also includes some capital projects totaling um, uh, $606,000. And if you'll go to page um, 70, um, we'll go through those. Okay. 
there are four projects that are associated with this fund. The first is um, $100,000, which is for the sign entrance improvements. That's for the sign entrances for this building. Uh, um, and then you'll also see $330,000 that is going for the lower parking lot. Uh, again, that's part of a multi-year uh, plan. You'll, when, you can't, when you come to McKay's or come into our lower parking lot, you'll notice that a portion of it has now been asphalted. Uh, this is to finish that project. We have $35,000 uh, to go for the community center gym exterior improvements and $41,000 to go to the alarm system update. This would be the fire alarm system update at the, uh, uh, the fire alarm system at the community center. Jeannie, do you want to talk about those two projects? I think she's still on. I'm still on. Yep. So the two community center projects, um, are you? One is for the exterior improvements to the community center and the other one is the fires, uh, is the upgrade to the fire alarm system. Great. So we had an audit by the fire marshal this past year to our community center. And at that point, um, showed us a couple areas of improvement to our fire system. And we had uh, a local contractor from Lincoln City come in and let us know uh, what kind of upgrades we would need, which is what that $41,000 estimate came from. The gym exterior has been a project that we have been trying to work on for the three years since I've been here, finding a contractor to, if you go to the exterior of our gym, you'll look at the bolts. They're rusted out. We need to replace them with brass bolts. Uh, we need to, um, uh, what's the word with, you take water and you're, you're spraying it down to get all the rust off of it. Power washing. Power washing, thank you. We need to get somebody in and it's a, it's a gigantic part of the building to go in there and power wash it. Right. So that has uh, been quoted to us as 35 grand. And that's something that needs to get done along with the gutters. Any questions on the projects associated with the capital facilities fund? I had a yes. Are we going to be painting the raised curbs in the center between the entrance and exit of the Lincoln City Square? I, I can answer that. This is Lila. Yes, we will be we will be painting all those that's temporary paint that's down right now. Well, I think they're just concrete. The the raised parts. Like I know the arrows are temporary but you know the center things that the pedestrian will walk across and then wait in that little area and then go do you know what i mean yes yes, yes. and those will be those will be all marked great reflective or non-reflective oh most most of the paint that you put down or um, thermal plastic is reflective so i i would say yes it will be reflective thank you Okay, um, any questions on the cat other questions on the facilities capital fund. Okay. All right, Agate Beach. Um, this is a, uh, this is a uh, landfill um, that has been closed and there's ongoing maintenance costs. Uh, it's $40,000 that we pay to the solid waste consortium as our part of our fee. And uh, that comes entirely out of the fund balance that's available to it. And then finally, we have the we have a, two of our th we have our internal service fund, which has um, three parts to it. And we're going to talk for a moment tonight about two of those. Uh, this an internal service fund is uh, is a, a fund that provides services to other departments of the city. Uh, the city is, its, is the internal service funds customer. We have three parts to it. We have the vehicle repairs, uh, we have IT, and we have our GIS support services. And the total revenue that comes in from the other departments for those services is $1,046,227. The 
349,565 comes uh, um, uh, if, uh, if to the vehicle maintenance. 561,381 is IT and 135,281 is GIS support. Okay, those are uh, items number 440, 1001, 1002, and 1003. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about vehicle maintenance and GIS. We'll talk about IT at, a, at, a, at our next meeting. Okay, under vehicle maintenance, we have two employees. If you look at 610110, um, we have two employees that are associated with that. Um, Uh, their their salaries are, I do believe, Debbie will have to correct me if I'm wrong. No, that can't be right. Yeah, okay. Uh, we have two employees in, this, in the first line. We have two. We have two employees total, one full-time, one uh, part-time. Yeah, we have one full-time and one part-time. So they're split yeah. between the two lines. Thank you. That's what was stumping me. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking, boy, we, we yeah. <laughs> Love that right. Love that right. <laughs> okay. Um, and then, um, and then we're looking at just a, a, a bit of an increase um, from our budget, but it reflects more of what our actual expenses are for the um, uh, for the vehicle maintenance parts. Now, what we're not sure about, and this would be not necessarily reflected in this budget, but it's reflected in the department's budget, gas prices have gone down. And so um, we should, in our actual budget, see a, a decrease in our gasoline expenses because we had budgeted for this fiscal year to be higher than what we're seeing now. And then there are no capital outlays proposed for this budget year. Okay, on page 74 is the geographical information systems. We have one employee that's associated with this. Um, the increase is, uh, is entirely due to changes in personnel services. And again, um, on the uh, half of that increase in retirement uh, is a result of the purse match. Any questions about the internal service funds? Did we at one point talk about uh, a part-time employee for this department? Our what? Part-time employee for GIS. Has that been resolved? Am I thinking something else? Um, we don't have a part-time employee for GIS. And there was a few years. Oh, sorry, Ron. And we're not anticipating hiring a part-time employee for GIS. Right. I just was trying to remember the conversations when it was that it was talked about and why we needed it and if that was all there. There was a big discussion that we had on having another employee versus contracting the services. Right. We budgeted for contracting of services and uh, we didn't spend it. And so I simply removed it from the budget. Okay, cool. Okay, that moves us to the recreation department. Okay, Mr. Chair, does anybody want to, would you guys like to take a break for a few minutes? Oh, Ms. Oxenholt has a question. Yeah, I'm down for a break. to take a break. <laughs> All right, well, let's do that. Mr. Chandler and everybody, let's come back here at 6.45. Okay. Sound good, everybody? All right. So say we're re recessed until 6.45.
All right, almost there. Hey, everybody. Audio is back on, folks. Sweet. Thanks, Tony. You're welcome. All right, Mr. Chandler, if you will continue, please, sir. Okay. If you will uh, um, go to page 10 of the budget. I mean, Um, we're going to talk a little bit about um, the revenues associated with recreation. Um, the question was asked, I'm going to take over the screen again. Okay, you should be looking at page 10 on your screen with one item in yellow. Um, uh, our chair asked the question, can we just hold the revenues steady um, without a, uh, without a, a, an increase in rates uh, and just keep things as they are? Well, the answer to that is yes, provided a couple of things happen. First is that if you're going, if the revenues remain the same, then your total expenditures also have to remain the same. And if an expenditure increases, then you're going to have to cut it, uh, an expenditure out or decrease an expenditure somewhere else if the revenues remain the same. Now, um, to offset an expenditure increases, um, you can look at a couple of ways of doing that or a combination of a couple of ways. You can, uh, th kind of three ways really. You can find a new revenue source. Uh, you can increase your membership, uh, the amount of money that comes in through the number of people who are members or the number of people that are walking into your, uh, into your facility, or you can raise your rent or a combination of those, any of those three. Um, but the real key answer in on if you hold your revenues, your rates the same and all other revenues stay the same then you also have to hold your expenditures the same. And if you add the total, and if you increase in one expenditure, you'll have to cut in another. And that's what we're gonna see us go through in this process. All right, thank you for that. I, let me try to explain this better so that I am understood. If I hear what you're saying, there's three ways to offset I think we have, as the city, have given away money without finding a new revenue source, without increasing membership, and without increasing rates. We have just given money away to organizations or what have you. One, you know, I don't know if 42% is the, the, the right number or a number should exist for a community center. I understand the reasons why. But how, how is it that you can just hold, um, why do we have to offset it at all is what I'm trying to get at. I understand, you know, there's $30,000 there and we want to have a zero or you want to have a zero difference or an increase in revenue. Like you don't want to have any kind of negative parts of it. But if the gutters and everything needs to happen, which is important to have the integrity of the building. And I feel, I feel like it's important to not raise at all any rates and simply provide, put out our efforts into increasing membership and services to get more people in there. How do, how do I make that statement, you know? Is that, does that, is that better? Ron or Debbie? Uh uh, welcome, Are you? Wait a minute, Debbie. Uh, uh, committee member Honebaum's uh, waving his oh, hand. Oh, I haven't seen it. I'm, I'm, my screen's off. Sorry, guys. Go ahead. 
Kevin. But Ron, you said that there's three ways to, to raise it. And I'm following what you're saying, Riley, about the, the preset 42% that we have. So if clear, clear this up for me, if you could, Ron, if, if we think that the we picked arbitrarily or somehow the 42% of uh, cost that the community center needs to pay, the other 58% comes from where? The general fund, taxes. So that's the fourth choice that I think Riley's getting to. It's not just three choices about, about having to balance the money. The fourth choice is we don't want to raise any rates. They need $30,000 more money. We need to move it from the general fund. It yeah. blows out the 42%, but as Riley is, I think what I hear Riley saying is the 42% seems kind of arbitrary. Yeah, but so here's another way to look at this. Uh, here's another way to look at this. The biggest argument I've ever seen a city manager and a finance director have was how do you account for recreation and community centers? And the city manager wanted to keep it a part of the general fund. And he wanted to keep it a part of the general fund so it didn't show how much it was being subsidized by everything else. The finance director wanted to separate it into its own fund so it would show how much it's being subsidized by everything else. Um, when you say we're going to keep it the same, and this budget has built in $30,000 uh, of a rate increase, and you're going to say we're not going to increase the rates, the city has to have a balanced budget, which means the cuts have to come from somewhere. So if they're not from the recreation department, they'll be from the police department, they'll be from the finance department, they'll be from um, uh, 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 the lawyer's department, they'll be from the administration's department, they will be from some other source of revenue. So when I talk about an increase in a, uh, a finding a new revenue source, that's, a, that's what it is you're going to say, we're not going to do it. So our new revenue source is going to be more will come from the general fund, which means the general fund will have less for all the other expenses the general fund has. How come you can't just predict the revenue from the community center to be $30,000 less? You mean to be $30,000 $30, more at the same rate? Right, oh, I guess, uh, yeah, I guess. We I could mean, do I that. We could do that, but it would mean that somewhere along the line in the next 12 months, if we're wrong, uh, Jeannie will have to cut her budget by whatever amount it's coming short. Doesn't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do that either. I don't understand. I'm still having, have Nancy, Nancy, you have a question. Yeah. So one of the things is I think that it should be a separate department and we should see what we want transparency. You should have, we should be able to see how much they're losing or how much they're making. Um, the other thing is, why can't all those workers, I don't think, they're, I don't know, but I would assume they're not working eight hours a day there. Why can't they valley up and pressure wash the building themselves um, as they're part of their job? So Nancy, right now, um, both in parks and maintenance, we're doing a lot of in-house and that's because we're not spending money right now. But even without the COVID-19, it's something um, that we do. The more technical ones like the outside of the uh, exterior of the gym, my staff aren't trained in order to do that. They're, that's high, tall heights they have to get to. Um, I do have a facility manager, Robert, who's working on a lot of things in house right now to save money. Um, I, I wanted to address something. To, I hope that answers a little of your question. Okay, Nancy. thank you. Yes, um, but definitely, I think for both parks and recreation, I know we're focusing on recreation. We are as frugal as possible and doing things in house with the making up the thirty grand. I know the revenue is the grant is highlighted right now, and, and that was a question that came up last budget year too. I do want you to know we're working hard on grants. I know that's never a guarantee of whether that revenue will come in or not. Um, we have only gotten fifty percent of our goal for this year, but we've already gotten in an extra eight grants. Um, we have gotten three hundred fifty percent over in our parks grant, but we're talking recreation now. 
a lot of our parks and recreation grants are parks and recreation grants. It's not seen as just a recreation grant or a park grant. So that's another way to bring in revenue. The other thing I, I hope we all can talk about too is just looking at hours and looking at fees. Uh, I understand concerns with raising fees. We haven't raised any since 2017. I have a document if you want to look on page, uh, it's in the agenda that Ron sent out, it's page 18, packet page 18. If you want to just look at that and the comparison of us uh, next to Newport, Toledo, uh, Toledo is the only one that has a lower cost than us and they only offer a pool. They don't have a, a gymnasium, leagues, fitness center, um, all those other amenities that are in it. So it, it is an avenue to look. Uh, we're only raise, raising it by about a quarter for, for the drop-in. I know a quarter is a lot to people though, if that's concerns that we have, especially coming out of COVID-19. I just think it's helpful to look at the other agencies though, and also look at our hours. Um, Lincoln City Parks and Recreation, our community center is open 101 hours a week. Uh, Newport's open 88 hours. Toledo, which is only a pool, 70 hours. Um, the one that's closest to us is Tillamook, which is 95 hours. So just some other cost saving measures to look at. We obviously want to <clears throat> provide the community with recreation, education. We're here from them, but with what's happening lately, I'm looking outside the box. Thank you. What if <clears throat> you had proposed earlier, Ron, to do the local tax sharing separate than the state tax sharing. Couldn't we propose to do the state tax sharing to cover this $30,000 of? Yes, but you'd have to cut $59,000 from somewhere else in the general fund. Doesn't it? I'm still having a hard All right. I, I, guess the, the, I just have a hard time of like, us not saying our budget is going to be $30,000 less. Like, well, what you're asking us to do is to be more liberal in our estimates. Now, we generally tend to be very conservative, and that usually pays off great benefits because sure. it, uh, but if we are more liberal, the, the more liberal you are in your estimates, the more chances you're going to have to make cuts during the year Absolutely. because you didn't re reach those revenue projections. Of course, of course. Nancy, did you have another question? Yeah, I just had a comment on the um, page 18 that was sent out is Lincoln City has the highest poverty rate. I mean, we're 23% poverty rate. Yeah. And if you compare it to Toledo, which is the closest one, they're making $10,000 more than our annual. Yeah. So we still fit the bill, I mean, of a, peri a very poor town, um, low income. Um, the other thing is I heard Snap Fitness is closing. Um, so you may get more people in through that. And then the other thing is, I think we get a false reading is um, because the city is paying for employees to go there. So that fee is included in all the numbers. Is that true, Ron? It is. It's included both as an expense to every department, but it's also included as a revenue Correct. to the community center. So yeah. if we were to stop paying uh, and just say, here you go, um, uh, and not pay the community center, then it would be losing tens of thousands of dollars in that case as well, which would have to be made up. Thank you. Uh, good point, Nancy. I, on page 18, please do check the medium income and the poverty rate. Yeah. Right. Thank you for explaining that further, Ron. Okay, thank you. All right, I just want to go through the revenues so you can see what revenues we're talking about. If you look on page 10, you'll see, on a, uh, let's, let me enlarge this. Item number um, 430281 uh, is a recreation grant uh, that is coming in for $10,000. If you go to page 11, you'll see um, um, uh, 88,100 is coming as a revenue source for fees 
327,313 um, is uh, those I believe are walk-in fees. 47,414 is for membership. That's the membership employee fees. I'm sorry, let me jump back. 4610114 is both your membership and your walk-in fees. 47,414, which is item number 4601014, that is how much all of the other departments pay the community center for the employee's benefit. And then you have item number 4601015, which is rental of uh, the um, multi-purpose room. Um, I have a statement. Yes, sir. So not to keep bringing it up, but I do mean to keep bringing it up. I, I forget because they don't have anything. We have how many hundreds of square feet being used by the senior center that does not pay rent that I would love to know and still haven't received total square footage occupied by the senior center divided to the $2,500 a month per month that $30,000 would be. If we had them pay something, it would be better than the nothingness that we're gonna have to keep raising rates. There's a large percentage of the community center being used by the senior center and that is valuable land that we're getting zero dollars plus paying their utilities plus renovations plus improvements and i we, i don't have those numbers we'll send them again we sent it but we'll send them again okay there's that too Brenda. i might also throw in there Sorry, Riley, if I could, along, the, we brought up how the city pays for employee memberships. The city also plays, pays for firefighter memberships. Uh, we provide those memberships free as charge as well, so just throwing that out. Where's that? It's not even in our statements. Why? We don't get money for it. I understand. If we were to record it, we would ha we would um, put it in as revenue, and then we would have to put it in as an expense somewhere, such as um, outside agency contribution. Well, would, if it's important to pay employees, it's important to document the employees going to the community center and we're paying it. It should be also as important to showcase the firefighters as well. It's gonna, yeah. You have to add it. You have to add an expense on a revenue, and that, and that's kind of. I, I've been not really super comfortable with the entry and an employee because it's, it, in my understanding, it, it's not really pure accounting. Um, if we were to increase it, I'd want to run it by our auditors. Yeah, I. Well, because you're kind of like making up revenue and making up expenses that well, aren't. It seems like that already. It already feels like we're paying it to be shown as revenue when it's I know hand, and I personally hand don't right hand. and that makes me uncomfortable well it's um, always but been. it's been a small it's it's been immaterial in the past so I don't know about immaterial when it makes my stomach go Whoa, like this <laughs> Kevin you have a question I was I could just concur with what you're saying exactly I'd like yeah. to know what that what that figure is yeah so Debbie and Riley, in order for an employee to get a pass at our center, they do need to register with us, get a membership card, and swipe it every time they come into the building. Right. Um, so we can show those numbers. And from what I understand, Debbie, if they don't get a membership with us, the department doesn't pay us for them. That's correct. It's based on the, the report that you send us once a year. Right. Yeah. Which, I, which I think is great yeah. for employee benefits and health and insurance premiums and all that stuff. And fully support you know the more you use it the better it is or something you know but that's not the way that it is. The challenge that we have with this and I understand Debbie's part from an accounting standpoint but I'm going to come back again from let's let's say we separated these out okay these and so well. separated the community center from the general fund so it's standing on its own okay okay if you stop paying from the sewer department, the water department, the general fund to the community center, 
you will lose $47,414 in revenue. It will have to be made up somewhere else. But isn't it also revenue that we're charging ourselves? Yeah, but you have to understand that the city isn't just one big accounting thing. Every fund is a self-balancing set, self set of accounts that has to stand on its own. Right. And that's why we have things like internal service funds where we pay and you just don't lump it in. And so while I understand what Debbie's talking about from an accounting standpoint, from a operational standpoint that Jeannie has to do, if you were to take 47,414, we separate them, which I think is a good idea, actually. I really do think that's a good idea. But if you separate it and you take those funds out that, so that the so that the other department so that the other funds don't have to pay into it, then Jeannie will lose forty-seven thousand four hundred and fourteen dollars in revenue. Right. Which means you'll have to have a corresponding cut in expenses. And so now I, we are up to seventy-seven thousand four hundred and fourteen dollars to cut. What page is that that you're on? If you look at page um, 11, item number 4601014. What's the ending fund balance then for that? 1,295, right? So- There isn't an ending fund balance in this because it's part of the general fund. Oh. So what we can do, what we can do on this is for your next meeting, which might be helpful, I don't recommend doing this in the budget because that's a pretty drastic change in such a short period of time. But we can break it out to show as though it was a separate fund and show you and show you what it would look like, both in the effects of the general fund and the effects of the uh, all of the uh, all of the other funds. And we can we can show what it will look like. Right. I just, and, you know, I'm just trying to say, you know, I, I get what you're saying as far as the $47,000 is, is money that Jeannie can spend or the, the parks director can spend, you know, that way. And that if we don't do that, then that's, I mean, I get what you're saying. I, I have two more revenues to just it's point all out. General fund, it's all general fund. It's all general fund. my point of view. You also have after school programs. I'm on page 12. Uh, item number 4640201. That's $72,574 that comes from your uh, after school program. <clears throat> and I missed one on the previous page. You have down at the very bottom. Um, your special recreation programs, item number 4640001 is $58,477. Uh, so a total, um, and then you also have transient room tax of $195,800. The community center has been designated as a park. Therefore, it's eligible to receive transient room tax funds and it receives $195,800, which is $816,006 in total uh, revenue. Okay. Uh, Ms. Hinton has a question, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Ms. Hinton. Hi, thank you. Um, my question kind of goes back to the conversation that um, we we're just having and don't we, we have in the budget I think like $35,000 or whatever the amount is for um, the police for exercise equipment. And then they're also included, aren't they, in the rec center and as memberships and as family memberships to use that? Shouldn't it be kind of either or rather than both? It, it can be, however, so two things. Their membership is um, is part of their uh, contract uh, through the union. In, in that, uh, one of the one of the challenges that police officers have run into is um, is ending up at the same place. Uh, 
exercising where people they have arrested, pulled right. over, and so forth. And so that's why um, we have, we're providing that extra uh, area for them. Right. And I believe city council said that that was a good idea. My question is either or, maybe their contract needs to be changed. It, because that's, what is that, $35,000 this year? That's a good item to, that's a good item to bring up in the union contract negotiations, which are actually are underway. I think, I think it's double dipping and it's hurting other people. And I, for one, am not in favor of the families. I am for the employees of the city, all employees. I understand that. I think we want wellness for our employees, but families to be included, how much more does it cost for that? Okay. And right. I know that it's putting rate. money in and taking money out and it ends up being a big goose egg, but. Okay. Anyway. Uh, we have Miss Oxenholt is next. Is uh, Ms. you all right? That's good. Okay. Ms. Uh, Ms. Oxenholt. My question is the glass studio rent. It looks like it's been the same for years. Is that by contract or can that be increased? What? Um, Allison, are you on? Do you want to speak to the glass studio? We are still muted, Allison. That was a contract that we just in the last, I think, two years, maybe three, uh, finished renegotiating that and it was a rate that was established by the city council. Sorry about that. Um, yes, the the um, the lease for the glass studio is on. Um, I believe it's a five year lease with some uh, renewals if the uh, certain timelines are met. But there is a two percent increase um, every year that goes up. So that um, usually gets calculated and then uh, the payments change um, in the new fiscal year. There's a, a new two percent increase okay they're, thank you they're increasing two percent a year but not but not um there should be I mean, if it went two percent to 15.4 but then went back down to 14 280 yeah that could have been the year that we renegotiated the lease um i know there was uh, a change in that rent schedule because we realized that we needed to get um, closer on track with market rate increases right and so um, when we did the lease, that might show there's a difference there. All right, thank and you. I'm sorry, I can't get my video to uh, upload. So I'll work on that. Thanks, and Ms. Walke. Unmute me, lower okay. me on Good job. all these things. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say that if we're covering family health insurance, then it's good for us to offer the, the community center um, activities to them also. Um, and if, if the police employees aren't using the rec center, their families could be. Those just my thoughts on that discussion. Thank you, Ms. Walty. Okay. All right, are you ready to jump into expenses? Oh, am I ready? Let's do this. Okay. Uh, if you will jump to page, um, I, oh, well, let me just jump back in for another thing, uh, really before we leave it. Um, um, the, the effect of the pandemic that we're going through on the community center. Right now, I have estimated that we are losing somewhere between thirty-two dollars to $40,000 a month by having the community center closed. Um, if, all of, if all of that ends by July 1st, we'll be okay. If it extends beyond that, we may be looking for budget cuts anyways. Okay. Would the budget committee be the place to ask for or to talk about putting aside some 
some welcome back to the beach uh, funds for some kind of something party, <laughs> you know. Uh, party yes. Thing. yes, if you would like to, uh, um, well, two ways to do that. One would be to set aside some, exp some funds, especially for that. But then the other part is that the budget committee doesn't get to dictate the programming, right? But right. they can make a recommendation to the city council for that. Program. Right. I would like to bring that back up um, at right. the time about having a welcome back to the beach event. Okay. All right. If you'll go to page seventy-six. We'll jump in there. Okay. Again, on page 76, item number 61060014 um, uh, is the retirement and the purse match of that is equal to $89,652. Also on page uh, 76 is the contractors, um, which you have budgeted um, $34,600. Um, and um, of that amount, $15,000 of that is for independent contractors. Those are the teachers of the different classes. They're not employees of the city. They're contract or they're contractors, and, uh, and, and we pay them through the fees that come in. Um, in, that, in that line, do we also allow them free use of the facility without charging them? Um, yeah, like, so like, I, like I firefighters, I believe we do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, an addition, and then 3000 of dollars of this is also going for some generator service repair that needs to be done. Um, the, one of the things that we wanted to point out was that our budget in the past for our independent contractor services was $10,000. Jeannie had proposed to increase that to $15,000 um, in order to make up for the, uh, the loss in revenue for uh, if the rate increase doesn't go through, um, then um, uh, we're proposing to remove $5,000 from the uh, independent contractors, which is the class instructors and trainers, which uh, could mean a limitation or a limiting of the growth of the of that of that pro of that program. We're going to talk about all that later, right? Um, as a whole, yes, but this would be a good time to speak about them individually. What does er what, what does everybody think? Well, that's the thing. I don't know. I don't know. Yes, Miss Walkie. You're still muted. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm trying to form my thoughts and click things. Yeah. When I saw how little the rate increase was, I was much more for it than I was two weeks ago. Um, I don't like rate increases, but um, this one's pretty minor, and I, I think our alternative, the choices that we've been given, I don't like the cuts. So I would, at this time, be in favor of, of supporting the rate increase. All right. And Ms. Hinton. I, I just want to say that on the face of it, um, I agree with um, what Susan Walkie just said. However, if you combine that with 
other increases, the increase in our water bill and the increase that folks are going to see when they have their garbage picked up in a year. I mean, and right now after people haven't been working and maybe they're receiving unemployment, I hope they're receiving unemployment, um, but that isn't at 100%. So I don't know how much blood you can get from turnips, but um, I'll leave that up to someone who can figure that out. I'm just hoping that we don't lose people because five more dollars is five more dollars they don't have this next year. That's it. Thanks. Thank you. Judy? Um, yeah, I, I agree with Susan. I was, I was um, pleasantly surprised that it wasn't such a dramatic increase. Um, and, and I would be for that before cutting it. I, I would probably look at doing something with the senior fees to reduce those a little bit um, because that's a, also a lower income group. That's my two cents. Thank you. Mr. Hellenbaum? I, I would agree with Judy on the, specifically on the senior fees. I don't think it's necessarily our role to parse uh, how the rate increase happens or doesn't happen, but I don't have, I agree with Susan, I don't have any problem with the drop-in rate changes necessarily. I think the annual pass rate increases seem pretty substantial and uh, you, I don't know, understand the business, you know your income and how much of it comes from annual passes versus drop-in passes. And I don't, I'm not gonna parse that. It just surprised me that it seemed like pretty big jumps, but I would be not in favor of raising senior rates and I'm not thrilled with the annual rates. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Oxenholt. All right, now don't mute, mute me yet. <laughs> um, so, I can't mute you. <laughs> so nobody looks at cutting, and I hate to say this, Jeannie, is, is salaries. I mean, people in other areas are taking 10% pay cuts. Um, OHSU, they all took 10% pay cuts starting right up from the top just to make sure that everybody's being taken care of. Um, you know, for seniors, their social security didn't go up as much. Um, I have people that live on $700 a month. So any raise, $3, $5, the garbage rates, the water, sewer, has a big impact on those people. So I think that at some point, um, I think we really need to be looking at different cuts, whether it's pay or something, um, you know, benefits or wellness packages, something, something's got to give. And it shouldn't always be the consumer that's giving it. Agreed. I think one thing I understand what you're saying, Nancy, that we're looking at, especially in recreation, is our staffing levels. Um, obviously, we want to keep our staff employed. A uh, large majority of them, especially our parts, our uh, our full-time staff, are union represented. Um, but where can we? had the minimal amount of staff to make the maximum amounts of customer satisfaction is something that we've been looking at for the past month and a half. And there will be some changes when we open again to more streamline the staffing level as compared to the customers and patrons that we're working with. So I hear what you're saying and, it, and that is something we look at. I agree, it, it needs to be looked at at all sides when it's coming to cuts. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, Ms. Harlan. Yes, well, I agree with Susan as well. I've been just listening to all the, what seems like a, a lot of confusion and a lot of pain that is going to occur for a fairly modest increase in, in what is being proposed. I mean, if, we, if it has to come from all these other spots. And I think, I think the recreation um, uh, folks have, have already been really frugal, or it'd be more than 30,000. So uh, I'm appreciative of, of them coming up with this number, which seems really reasonable. And I find it hard to just go in and hack away at other things that don't really necessarily make sense. Right. Thank you. 
Um, Ron, you know that. Thank you, everyone. I, you know, Nancy brought up a good point. Um, you know, we haven't seen any kind of salaried employees um, wage reduction, 10%, 5%, 10% over six months. You know, I, I think that there are ways, you know, um, that, you know, we, we all as the budget committee say what that should be. And if salaried employees, you know, that line item, we have that ability to reduce those, those line items as, as a whole. So that's how Jeannie's um, position came up, up about, you know, a few years ago, if you'll remember, you know, we voted for it and then voted for it again in council. So, I mean, I appreciate the other perspective and bringing up, I wasn't, I forgot completely that other institutions have, you know, reduced uh, employees wages temporarily. Um, you know, that's something that we could talk about too, Nancy. I just, um, one of the things I thought is that we could not adjust any salaries on a budget committee. That is, that is not our job. We, we, re we can reduce the amount of money for this, for that line. Okay. So if, if it's the proposed budget, say for the recreation is 30, 423, we say, you know, that and every other budget within our limit, all of those get reduced by 10%. And it'd be interesting to see what that money is. Right. Ron, I don't know, and Debbie, you know, what that would be like. And I understand I'm asking you to put your neck on a block, but I'm just asking. Well, the thing that you need to consider in this, and, and it's unfortunate that we're in a pandemic right now because it's confusing things. Um, when we are talking about a rate increase for, the, for this, it's not because of the pandemic. It's because of the need to have a permanent rate increase. I don't think anybody thinks it's because of the pandemic. And so when you're talking about cutting an employee's salary for six months, that's not a systemic change. That's just saving a few bucks uh, in, in its salaries. But it doesn't deal at all with the long run. And well, so think... when, we're, when we're looking at the costs you know, uh, of, the, of the operations, we're not looking to save something for this next fiscal year. If a rate increase didn't go through, we would be looking at something that becomes a permanent change. Right, you want to, like the water bill is going to be increased 4% every year for the next four years. Well, no, a better example is that um, if you go with the proposed marijuana tax where it's going to go into the general fund, or I mean, it's gonna go into the parks maintenance fund, then the police chief will have a permanent loss of a cadet. That position will not come back. It won't come back next year, it won't come back the year after that. It's a permanent cut. And so it's important to distinguish between um, something that will give you a cash influx because an expense went down, but it's gonna go back up next year versus something that is more long-term. Well, the cadet wasn't paid with that the first year it was done. So, I mean, it was paid with other money. So in other words, if you were to ask me to cut salaries, I would look to eliminate positions, not just cut salaries, I, for a couple of reasons. One is that salaries are negotiated through the union contract, but to just say, we're gonna take a 10% cut, doesn't do anything for the benefit of the, of the fund for the long run. So if you were to say, we're going to cut salaries by this amount, I would, the first thing I would be looking at is what positions do we eliminate? Because that's a long-term uh, savings, not a short-term savings. I think it was a kind of a tangent thought of, or a parallel thought of reducing costs outside of just rate increases. Nancy, if I'm wrong, please forget, you know, help me out here. But I think you were just talking in general I mean, we're losing money. We're losing six hundred thousand uh, dollars in TRT tax. We're losing forty thousand dollars in just the whatever. The city's losing money every time, and it's going to have impacts next year. So for next year, similarly, reduce the amount that we have to pay the the, the employees by ten percent. I think that was for a, you know, Nancy. I don't know, but you know, a temporary thing. 
that's an entirely different that's an entirely different discussion and it's but, one that but, the city council will be having in the very short future is um if um we continue to have the loss of revenues uh that we are experiencing now what expenses can be cut but the budget is the budget is put together as though we're going to continue as we have been now the second plan of this the second part of it which is really something for the city council to consider more than the budget committee is that just because the budget is approved doesn't mean that every expense is going to be ready to be spent because it we um, we have to make sure that the revenues are coming in and if they're not coming in uh, then then we won't be going forward with the expenses so what the budget committee is not a part of and is not seeing is that I've already identified hundreds of thousands of dollars in expenses that will not go forward unless the revenues are there and that's a discussion that the city council will have in the very near future well, I understand that but and and separately for instance if the recreation department's proposed 2022 budget is 42 $423,000 and the budget committee says, no, we want it to remain at 399. This and every other department, we want the salaried employees to stay the same. No, whatever that is, isn't that within the power of the budget committee? No, what's in the power of the budget committee is to, is to set the amount of the expenses and the revenues. Um, it is not within them to say, you can make a recommendation, but it is not within their authority to say, cut an employee or everybody takes a 10 percent cut or that's something that falls to, to so we could say that the that we could say line item six one zero one one zero zero stays at three hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred fifty nine thousand dollars yes for the 2022 budget yes you could do that and then it would fall upon uh me and our staff to come back and show how um how you uh uh how that's affected How that's affected how it affects the operation so for example if you were to again if you were to say i want to cut salaries across the board or i want to reduce the salary budgeted amount by 10 percent across the board then it would be my job to come back and say this is how you do it well you would give us options of what we could do to get that done not to the budget committee no i mean to council i would discuss that with the city Ron, just can I throw out just to clarify what you're actually approving is the departmental total on the budget. The line items are just detail that we provide to you. Mm -hmm. But when we do a resolution to set the spending limit, it's by department, and it's up to the it's it's I think I think it's up to city city management to decide how to accomplish the services within the given total budget. Per department, not per line item. Per department, right? It's per department. How did we yeah, create? Uh, let me, let me, then? Let me jump the, in it on. It was voted that. no. It was no. voted no at council, and then, or it was voted no. At the, it was not recommended by the budget committee, and then we did in fact do it at council. So how do you do that the opposite way? Let me jump in on that because that's not that's not my budgeting practice. Mm -hmm. If you, for example, you wanted to eliminate or cut in half some budget number, okay? Um, and you wanted to recommend to the city council, and we've done this before, of how that should be done, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, and, uh, and then the council can take and make a decision from there. Um, while Debbie's technically correct, um, I, that is not the way I budget. So your, I your practice in our, your practice in the budget committee's ability may not be the same but that's no, but again, within our but again we've done this before so again if you were to come in and say um, this budget item has a hundred thousand dollars in it and we want to cut it to fifty thousand and we recommend to the city council that this is how you make that operational change that's okay and then that recommendation would go to the city council and they'd have a discussion with it so that's directly directly opposite of what you said about us saying how, right, make a recommendation that the salaried employees do take a 10% cut, and we want that amount to be equal to that. How is that different? It's than not. What you just said? 
you, we're talking about two different things in this case. In this case, if you, if you are saying, we want all salaried employees to take a 10% cut because we need to cut this budget by 10% um, because there's some kind of a shortfall, then that's, you know, that deals with the short run. But if you're saying that we don't want a rate increase for the next so many years, then I have to come up with a permanent expenditure, expenditure reduction, not a one-year expenditure reduction. Yeah, I understand that. Judy? Uh, yeah, so I was thinking about the marijuana funds. And so we were talking about putting it into the parks. And you said recreation is a different department, right? It is. So couldn't we recommend 30000 go into the recreation department and then the rest go into the parks department? You could only do that if you separated the recreation into its own fund, because right now it's just a part of the general fund. You can make a recommendation that, that uh, something is increased or decreased, but uh, the recreation department is just part of the general fund. So you could then technically take $30,000 from the marijuana money for the parks and put it into the general fund designated in our minds for the recreation department or no? I think so. I'd have to work kind of play that through with the numbers and work it and, ma and make sure I understand it. But Mr. Anderson or Mr. Norakis? Yeah. Um, interesting discussion. Could we uh, proceed with the rest of the budget review? And then, you know, we still got another meeting yet. Yeah. Um, and a lot of this, when we start getting down to the fine points, might be a little better after we've reviewed the whole budget. Sure. That's, that's a great ad. Thanks. Mr. Allenbaum? Yes, Ron, correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't you say earlier that the recreation center is designated as a park? It is. So then if, if we took Judy's thoughts about moving marijuana money into the park fund, then the money moved in the park fund could be uh, used for the maintenance of the facility of the recreation yeah. center. The the best way to do that so it's clean is to take the is to take the recreation, move it into the parks fund, so they're completely separate from the general fund. That's the that would be the cleanest way so that you can actually see where the money is going to and from. It, it gets muddled when it's when it's all part of the general fund and it becomes difficult when you're moving funds from one fund to another or, i mean just within the same fund so that's the easiest thing to do is just to simply separate that out um uh, it's something that um, um it'd be difficult to do this year because of just timing and a lot of things that would need to go into it. but i think it's a great idea for future budgets to separate the recreation out of, out from the general fund. Cool. And to Mr. And to Mayor Anderson, can we can we move along, please, Mr. Chandler? If you're ready, we can. Yes. Yeah. Now, since we've um, since we've already discussed possible changes due to a rate increase, I'm not going to go over them again. I'm just going to go through the items that you have in the budget, so you can so that you know what they are. Um, the next item we have is item number 6205002, which is um, advertising and promotion. Um, that's $5,300. Uh, that, um, that comes from radio advertising of $2,500 and um, newspaper advertising of $2,000. That is down uh, from what we have budgeted and used in the past. Um, bum. Why is that down? Um, if we're looking at growing, wanting to grow the number of people who are using that, why are we, why are we spending less money there? Again, it was, uh, all of these have been based on the idea that there was a certain target the expenditures were supposed to reach. And so those, and so what you see in here are the best, um, are the best expenditures based on reaching that target. And that target, as I mentioned, was 42% uh, 
uh, the revenue should equal 42% of the expenditures. And okay. We're at a third. The other, the other part that the other part that all of our departments have had to do is that the operational expense, expenses cannot exceed the projected revenue increase in this case for the general fund, which is a, a 3% increase. Okay. And it would be great if we could tie in marketing to short term rentals, the benefits of the community center. I mean, you know, that would be amazing. And to have a, the, the budget be a third less than it was every year, it gets cut by, a, you know, a third. That's wild, you know, and seems like you're, you know, closing. I, I hear what you're saying. Uh, Ms. Walkie. I have a question about um, a line item at the bottom of the page there, books and periodicals. We budgeted 250 and um, we have budgeted 250 again this year um, for next year, but expenses was 750. Why $500 discrepancy there? Um, let me look that up here, just a second. The, um, the, the, the expense associated while she's looking that up, the expense associated with this is newspaper okay. subscriptions. The, the activity guides. Sorry, can you, I hope you all can hear me. My internet connection is going in and out. I'm upstairs in the community center. So if you're not hearing me, wave your hand. We um, can hear you. Oh, good. I wonder why we have spotty reception in our director's building. <laughs> I hope we can remedy that. I'm good. Somehow. I'm okay. <laughs> I mean, you're not. So what do we got to do there? I don't know. Um, so this actually yeah. looks like some rec kid supplies got put under that. Who, it's Susan, did oh. you have a question? Okay. So let me work with Debbie on that. All right. We should only be spending that money on magazine subscriptions that we get for our fitness center for people to utilize when they're working out. Yeah, uh, and there's an line <coughs> item for the, the teen center. Would, in you know, similar to the library, aren't a lot of the library, or maybe, I don't know, maybe the library subscriptions are also purchased by individuals wishing to donate subscriptions? Has the community center looked at people wanting to do that as well? Yes. I think that's a great idea. Um, we do have people donate occasionally, but we haven't made a big effort for it. So we, we could easily save money there. Something. I'll talk to staff about it. Or maybe, yeah, and see if, you know, Kirsten, how Kirsten does it. I don't know. I just, yeah. just thought. Just a drop box like the little library that's outside of our center where people drop off books. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, the next is on page um, 77. Some of these, some of these that I have highlighted, I'm not going to cover because uh, they were associated with cuts. Um, if you look at uh, item number one, one let's see, six two one one zero three zero, which is swimming pool maintenance. Um, some of the uh, expenses that I wanted to mention would be some motor repairs of, uh, equal to $3,000, plumbing repairs $1,000, electric control maintenance $1,900, new drains and gates uh, at the bottom of the pool for $5,000, new relays for uh, sump pumps in the boiler room at $5,000, and then control upgrades and repairs at $10,000. Um, if if you look at item number six two four zero 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 one, special recreation programs, these include the Valentine essay contest, the sports camp, touch a truck, half marathon, uh, volleyball leagues, middle school track, uh, Ocean's Edge five k race. National Night Out, Deck the Dock, Soccer and Outdoor League, 
Basketball League and the Jingle Bell Jog. I didn't hear anything pickleball in there. <laughs> Not as a special recreational program, but we do have pickleballers that use the, our, our gym. Um, if you look at item number uh, 6240002, the after school program, that includes $2,000 for bus use for summer field trips, $2,100 for supplies for various uh, trips, and two way radios of $500. And then still on page 77, if you look at, um, I'm going to lump both of these together, um, 6320201 and 6320208, both of those are capital items. You have uh, a new auto belay system for the rock wall. Uh, suit mate suit dryer, um, new AEDs to replace the aging old ones, fitness sports equipment upgrades, and um, ADA door openers on the locker rooms. And that one's $15,000. That's the 6330208. That's recreation. I'm ready to move into parks. We want to talk about the swimming. Did you talk about the swimming pool maintenance? We did. Okay. Sorry. Okay, I am moving to page um, 78. Again, as you notice on 4105010 uh, is the transient room tax. The um, parks maintenance is almost entirely. Um, uh, dependent or uh, uh, funded by that. Uh, you also have a transfer of $106,650 from the general fund to support the parks maintenance. That's item number 4702111. Ron, if I may, I just saw uh, we have what page are you on? 78. 78. Did and what did you just say? I'm sorry. I just had a thought. I'm sorry. We had uh, a transfer. We were proposing a transfer of $106,650 from the general fund to support the parks. Okay. Uh, I was looking at line 4690501 donations, and um, I didn't see anything for the park. You know, it'd be cool if all our open spaces, we had a way in which people could donate or an app or something. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend those steel containers like at Drift Creek Falls. But like, there's been no donations. Are we, are we soliciting donations, you know? Not generally, no. So um, we do that through our memorial. Sorry, Ron. Go I ahead. didn't hear you. Go ahead. So our donations are more in the um, avenue of memorials for the bricks, the pavers, and the benches. We did start that up in 2018 and, and didn't follow through too much on it this past year. Uh, we can re-up re that. We do adopt a trail and adopt a park, but don't tag a feed to that. Maybe we could relook at that. Um, okay. I mean, people love giving money if you live, give them a way to, yeah. give, you know, especially for open spaces or parks maintenance stuff. Like if they knew that their dollar, their 20 bucks was going to a new swing set, you know, they might feel really happy about that. Yeah, right. They do it for a recreation side. They sponsor whole leagues and, and sports right. programs. Why not park? Why not do it the same way every year? You want to support Agnes Creek? Here you go. Okay, the next uh, is on page uh, 79, the expenditures. Um, first item again, as we've mentioned in each department, uh, item number 
0.014 is retirement of that amount, $76,253 is the purse match. I also wanted to mention of the, um, of the contracted services, uh, which is a $46,328, that's item number 6201119. And the North Lincoln, uh, of that, North Lincoln Sanitary Services garbage pickup is $20,000 a year. We have $4,000 a year for uh, restroom lockup services. Um, we have, I'm sorry, for 4,000 for porta potty rental. Um, the restroom, we, we contract with a company, a security company to lock up our restrooms at night. Um, that is a cost of $12,000. And then um, down in the south end of town, we have rental of uh, an entrance sign, which is $4,800. What time do the bathrooms close? <coughs> Excuse me. Depend, depends on the time of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, during the summer, it's uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, during the winter, it's at dusk. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Also on page 79. Let me bring this down. Um, under system maintenance, a couple things that I wanted to point out to you. Uh, this is item number 6210010. Um, $50,000 of this goes for playground remodeling. Uh, one expense that we have seen that has continued to grow, um, and this year it's budgeted for $50,000, is homeless camp cleanup. And that will do four or five uh, cleanups. And then we have um, some paving projects associated with the, pro with the parks of $30,000. Susan um, Walkie. Yes, um, Ron, you mentioned the entrance sign. Is that the lease for the property that the sign is on? It is. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right, if you go to page 80, uh, there's one that I want to point out to you that has some very, very significant um, developments to it. Um, item number 6330301 is park improvements. We have budgeted $150,000 for improvements to a new park, either the Keel Park, or um, what's it's called? What's its new name, Jeannie? Masika. I think that's right. Masika. Masika. Thank you. Masika. Or Taft Park. Um, we've been waiting for several years on Taft Park to receive a no further action is necessary from the Department of Environmental Quality, so that we can go forward with the purchase of that. Actually, we haven't been receiving it. The, the school district has. They have received that and uh, sent us that information. We still have the funds budgeted to purchase that park and that will be going to for discussion with the city council in June. Uh, okay. So um, the park improvements on this one, um, the policy that we have had has been that Taft Park has been our primary, uh, our priority of these two parks. But until such time as it was able to purchase it, we were putting funds towards um, the, 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 uh, the park on Southeast 3rd. Um, with, this, uh, with this purchase, if the council approves it and doesn't give us any changes in priorities, then these funds would be used for any upgrades needed in Taft Park. Great, thank you. Um, Ms. Casper. Yeah, I, I just had a question. Um, I guess it's under resources. Um, it's small, but you know the um, the telescopes that they have at the beach accesses in various places. All that money was supposed to be going toward park equipment. Whoever would the benefit Pajeri was of that? Is that somewhere in our budget? Are we collecting that, or is it too minuscule to add, or what? Maybe can you address that? That's not our. Yeah, money. we are. 
we are still collecting it. I, if I remember right, it's a 50-50 share. There's some, there's some share mm -hmm. um, on it, but um, our part, we are collecting, and it's getting put into Parks Capital Fund. I'm not remembering which one off the top of my head, but I could find out in just a sec. If oh, Scott's coming because he knows. <laughs> I'm sure it's not a big amount. It is a 50-50 split. Do you know what fund? Oh, it goes into fund uh, 271. Um, we don't get. Oh, I mean, it's not much. We don't get a whole lot out of it. You know. 271 is the capital uh, fund. Uh, the park. Yeah, it's under other revenue, so you can see it's it's not very much. Do you think it would be cool if? You know, we put a sign that says, look, look here and help our parks, you know, like your money goes to this, this or that, you know, like the gas pump, or I'm sorry, when you go to fill up your car tires, there's a thing that says feed, the, the, your quarters go to feed the needy, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Who has quarters? Mm -hmm. uh, if you go to page 81, Again, um, what we are looking at on this is um, the same issue that we're dealing with, and that's that uh, the expenses are increasing at about 4% and the revenues are increasing about 3%. So as with others, that is a uh, ongoing uh, issue that we'll need to deal with. Um, um, are we, can we look at Wacoma Playground capital improvement? That, that, that rubber stuff is awful. I'm just letting you know if you've ever had your kids in there, it goes into their hair and you, and it's like lice. You have to get it out piece by piece by piece. And I don't know if we're 100%. I know it says ADA, but I thought they have ADA compliant manufactured wood chips now. And looking at that difference. Yeah, it's ADA, Riley. It was a new textured sur surface for sure. And I've heard, I've heard what you said before, and also from other patrons. Um, yeah. It was a new idea that park agencies were looking at. It's recycled playground surface. Yeah. So let me talk with Joe and, Please, and I see. Mean, if we're gonna, if we're gonna spend the money to correct. buy this stuff, it's it's really, I, it's really bad. We, we didn't go there because of how painful it was to get that out of the kids hair. Okay. Okay. Um, that finishes the uh, parks. Any questions before we go to the library? Okay, if you will go to page 86. The library did an outstanding job of um, maintaining their budget. Um, uh, on page 86, um, item again, 6106014 of the retirement, $83,286 is, um, is the purse match. And then if you go to page 87, um, you'll note that um, total materials and services, I had to fuss it, uh, oops, I had to fuss it uh, at uh, Kirsten just a little bit over this. Her budget's $373 more than last year, and I just had to tell her that was just totally unacceptable. Now, she did a marvelous job at, uh, at uh, um, uh, making some very difficult decisions um, to meet the goals that we had established for all of our departments. Um, and um, I really wanted to turn the time over to her for a few minutes to just talk a little bit about uh, some of the programming we have at the library. Hi, folks. Um, thank you for uh, having me here today. Um, this is probably going to be review for all of you, but I did want to sort of just remind you a little bit about the library services and um, and how the library works. We offer library cards to everyone who lives in Lincoln County. 
Uh, this is funded through the city's general fund. And then county residents are funded through our membership in the Lincoln County Library District. So we receive tax revenues from the, uh, from the unincorporated areas um, in exchange for those services to um, those who live outside the city limits. So that means that everyone who lives in Lincoln County can get a library card. Um, our main areas, uh, I guess uh, to go over our main areas of programming and services, our first is uh, youth services. This is where we have our, our early literacy activities, things like uh, preschool story time, school visits, uh, summer reading, of course, the, um, uh, the collection, the picture book collection, children's literature, um, and then also our community partnerships. Like right now we have a partnership with, well, up until <laughs> currently suspended partnership with uh, parents as teachers with the Lincoln County Department of Public Health. So uh, they come once a month and we do our story time and then they do a continued class for parents with activities for the kids and a craft and things like that. Um, this is also where you'd find our, our teen and tween programming, um, summer reading. Again, um, we have some good partnerships with the local schools. Um, we have a partnership where we bring some of our materials to the Taft High Media Center so that students can check them out there. We know it's sometimes harder for young people to come to the library, so we try to find ways of bringing the library to them. Uh, we've also done some programming with Rec Kids and uh, other community center partnerships. Um, that kind of goes along with our outreach services, which is, um, uh, you know, most people recognize it as being the department that does our homebound services. So people who can't physically come to the library, we bring the library to them. We do deliveries of books, uh, usually every two weeks or once a month. Um, and we also maintain site libraries at some of the uh, local um, apartment complexes and assisted living facilities. And then also we have some little shelves throughout the, the community at, uh, um, I think there's one down at the gas station in Depot Bay. There's one at the Tackle Box, places like that. And then we have our little libraries as well, which are the little um, uh, free libraries throughout the, the different neighborhoods. Um, this is where we also would, I would consider a lot of our community partnerships to belong to the outreach category. We, um, I, I attend uh, the Lincoln County Health Integration Network meetings once a month so that uh, I can learn about what, um, what programs are available to families and individuals in Lincoln County and then also give them information about what we're offering at the library. And um, we're also a liaison for the state talking books program and their Braille library. And then we also um, participate in uh, state and national organizations that uh, uh, we make connections with them to um, uh, kind of further the cause of libraries and make sure also that libraries like ours are included in those national plans and state plans. Um, and then we also, this is also where we would put a lot of our service to underserved populations, such as uh, Spanish speakers and uh, people who are experiencing homelessness and just constantly trying to make new connections in the community. Uh, there's also our reference and technology department. Um, that's where we do reference questions. So if folks have things that they need help research with, um, you know, technology issues, things like that, we, they can come to the library or give us a call and we can help them with that. Um, we check out uh, Wi-Fi hotspots. So right now we have 10. I'm hoping to get some more in the coming fiscal year. Um, people can check those out for two weeks and those allow them to have internet access where they might not normally be able to. You can um, use them like a Wi-Fi hotspot, um, any place that has uh, cellular, cellular data coverage. Kirsten, may I stop um, you there? <laughs> oh yeah, sure. I, I raised the hand. I was like, wait, raise me. I am the guy that allows the hand. <laughs> So uh, in, in that, some of, sometimes um, they get these Wi-Fi hotspots. How many connections do they allow? They allow for 10 connections. Have you? So is, usually, oh, sorry. Sorry. The question is, is if they're in an area where other people are nearby, do you know the, like, if the physical location, 
Like if you see the Wi-Fi, here's the password and you can connect kind of thing so that it's, mm -hmm. yes, it's on one person's account, but then maybe families from a different apartment or townhouse or something could also do that. Is there is that a, a bit of an ability? Um, you know, that would, um, I, theoretically, yes. Um, we do have a password that's uh, associated with the account. Mm -hmm. um, if someone chose to share that password, then they then other people in the area could connect. Um, we like to keep that at least somewhat protected because the there there is a you know the, if someone's using that Wi-Fi hotspot, they're falling under our electronic use policy. Right. Right. And uh, you know, to be completely honest, it's not that we can monitor what people are doing or anything like that. But if we did find out that someone was using that hotspot to do something illegal, then mm -hmm. potentially the person who had it checked out, you know, could somehow be implicated in that. Right. So, so there is um, we have, yeah, we have um, during this, um, during the library closure, we did take, we have taken the hotspot out when we do, um, we've been giving away free books at the Taft High meal pickup. And often we'll bring the hotspot with us and post the uh, the password so that if people need to connect to the internet, they can do that. That's great. So there's some options there. Um, along Nancy, with our- I think Nancy has a question if I may stop. Oh, I'm sorry. Just a question. Do you have cameras in the library? We do have security cameras, yes. Okay, because I just hear there's a lot of drug deals that go down with a lot of the homeless people in there and I know that um, there's some others that um, were in the kids room that were child molesters. So I'm just wondering if there's any watchful eye that goes around and, you know, sort of patrols every hour or something. Now, I am not aware of any confirmed cases of people dealing drugs or of uh, child molesters in the children's room. Um, we you know, we work with the police if we get reports if, of um, things that are going on that aren't supposed to be happening, and right. the police have access to those videos. Um, I am not aware of any confirmed cases of either one of those things that you've described, however. Okay, if, I'll get with you later. Sure. Um, going on to uh, kind of going off of reference services, we also have what we call collection services, and that's what we think of as the libraries, um, you know, the, the things that most people think of as the library, the books that you can check out, the DVDs, magazines, newspapers. Uh, we also have ebooks and downloadable audiobooks, and we offer um, assistance. So if people uh, need help figuring out, well, if I like this book and this book, what should I read next? We, we can help you with that as well. We call that reader's advisory. It's one of our favorite things to do. And um, uh, and then the last uh, sort of outward facing service that we provide is the, um, you know, adult programming and lifelong learning. So those are things like um, all of our author programs, our science night that we've done in partnership with the Black Squid, uh, trivia night, Lincoln City Reads, we do adult summer reading, and uh, have a lot of other discussion and lecture programs. Um, and then in, internally, we also have our volunteer services program. And our volunteers um, do the work of what would probably be at least three full-time staff members if we didn't have volunteers. They do all of the processing of the new book, so putting the stickers and the covers on. They do all of the shelving. They do much of the retrieving. When people somebody places a book on hold, they go out and they find it in the stack and things like that. So we're very grateful to our robust volunteer program. Um, and then, uh, do folks have questions about the current services? Nancy, do you have another question? No, I didn't take my hand down. Okay, thanks. Anybody else? And um, <clears throat> I'd love to update you on what we've been uh, uh, getting accomplished while, while the library has been closed to the public as well. Uh, I mentioned the um, giveaways at the meal site. We've been taking donated books from the Friends book sale and making those, uh, putting those into bags by age level and giving those out on Fridays at the Taft uh, meal pickup. Um, we've 
We've gone ahead and diverted some of what we would normally spend on print uh, books to purchase more ebooks and more downloadable audiobooks. Um, so we've we're building our collection there, and I'm, we're actually seeing. Um, I found out today that our uh, circulation in ebooks has gone up 50% since the library closed. Not too surprising. Um, Wonderful. Uh, yeah. We're still doing uh, online and phone reference and technology help. So Mac fielded uh, at least 150 phone calls in April from folks who needed help with getting cards, getting set up. Um, and then we're doing a lot of um, kind of virtual programming as well. We've done a book club meeting so far. We're putting up videos almost every day. And uh, if you hadn't, haven't had a chance to see Rachel's video on how to make cheese, it's really <laughs> delightful. She did a great job with that. And uh, yeah, we're, we're um, you know, continuing to update our website with vetted information about the epidemic and then also about resources in the county and in the state and uh, making sure that we're getting as much good information out there to folks as possible. So, Was it uh, you guys that were featured in the newspaper just recently about all the different events and the Parks and Recs Department? Were you both recognized? Uh, I think so. We, we partnered with Parks and Rec to help with the uh, spread the word about the superhero dance party. Yes. Um, I think that some of the video or some of the news spots actually managed to catch me and my daughter dancing in our kitchen. So it's one of the congratulations. It was super fun. A wonderful, <laughs> a wonderful thing and 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 let congratulations, really. It's Thank good. you. It was I was so happy to see that. So great job, you guys. Thank you. All right. Anything else? What else do you have, Kirsten? Well, that, that pretty much covers it. You know, we're continuing to um, work closely with the city um, uh, emergency management coordinator to figure out the best, safest way for the library to open when we're able to do that. And in the meantime, we've undertaken some major projects, um, uh, we, having the upholstery deep clean, doing some other things in the building that need to get done. So we're we're keeping ourselves busy and we're adding new videos and things like that all the time. And really, sorry, sorry, really looking forward to seeing our people again. Yes. I did have a question. You have zero for gas, fuel, and oil. I will have to check on that. That may have been an oversight. Yeah. I'm, I'll make myself a note. May, maybe I'm going to go uh, like $600 over rather than $300. You know. You're still under $1,000. <laughs> you are great. All right. Anybody else have questions for library department or Kirsten? All right. Mr. Chandler. Okay. Let me wait long. Okay. Um, so just a quick question, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. We are prepared um, to go forward with Explore Lincoln City which includes Explore Lincoln City and Percentage for Art, Economic Development, which includes Economic Development, Workforce Housing in the Villages uh, at Cascade Head, and Planning, which includes Planning and Building Inspection. Um, would you like us to press forward? Um, that would probably take us, depending on how long your conversations are, till nine o'clock. Uh, how about... You know, I think Explore Lincoln City might be another longer topic. You know, I, under, I would love to go till nine o'clock. Do you think maybe we could do like planning? I mean, I don't know if you're prepared and like city council and some of the other ones that we know we can just kind of knock out without it being, I mean, I don't know. Let's ask you guys, do you feel like you have a lot of questions for the Explore Lincoln City? Probably. Yeah. Mitch, so-so. Deanna, Judy, yeah, Susan, do you think, with a head nod or shake, I mean, do you think it'll be a long, Dick, Chester, you guys look comfy over there, <laughs> Estelle? I think, and I think we could get through Explore Lincoln City in 45 minutes. Yeah, you think so? Okay, all right. Okay. Okay, well, let's go for it. All right. Explore Lincoln City, if you go to page 90.
Again, um, beginning with item number um, 4105010, you can see that uh, Explore Lincoln City is almost entirely dependent upon transient room tax. Uh, the next item to consider on this page is item number 4890010. That is your projected beginning fund balance. That is changing. Um, um, the City Council approved a e uh, COVID-19 economic aid package uh, of $635,000, which will come from the fund balance. Excuse me, Ron, uh, Riley. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I didn't see. Sorry, Deanna. That's okay, I just wanted, I just wanted to interrupt, so you could put back on the screen the numbers for people. Oh, who I'm sorry. Watch. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Deanna. Okay, does that do it? Thank you, Councillor. Okay, uh, so again, item number four one zero five zero one zero. That's the transient room tax projected revenue. Um, beginning fund balance, which is 4890010, um, that will go down um, by $635,000. Uh, the City Council adopted an economic aid package, which will come from the contingency, the reserves of, um, of uh, Explore Lincoln City. So the estimated beginning fund balance will be somewhere around $1,267,096. Okay. Um, all right, let's see. If you, let's see, also on page, I can't get that to move. Also on page um, 90, um, again, you have the retirement, which is 6106014. Of that amount, the purse match is equal to 66,443. Yes, Ms. Walkie, hold on. Is, is my recollection correct in that the, the ending fund balance was pretty high because he was saving that for the visitor center? That's, That's correct. correct. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the, uh, the objective was to pay cash for that and not have to go into any debt. Right. Thank you. Okay, on page uh, 91, um, you have item number 6201119, which is miscellaneous contracted services of $548,500. I wanted to point out what some of those went uh, or uh, what some of those services are and then have um, Ed uh, chime in and explain a little bit of those. Uh, the first amount is for an agency and contracted design services of $120,000. We have digital asset and media support of $98,000. We have a PR firm annual contract of $66,600. And we have video photography production of 84,500. And why don't we go to there and Ed, why don't you explain those a little bit? Okay, sure. Um, the uh, agency and contracted design services, that's VPN, that's our uh, firm uh, that we use for uh, the, the paid advertising, the brochures, the uh, posters, the uh, campaigns for uh, finders keepers. Uh, they're the ones that did the cutout art for the billboards and the wrap trains up in Portland. Um, the uh, digital asset and media support at 98. Um, there's, uh, there's a lot in there. Uh, Madden Media, the company we use for the advertorials uh, is in there. Uh, Book Direct, uh, which is the Jackrabbit booking engine for the website is on there. Within that, there's an Insight Direct and a Meta Direct that allows us to get demographics and information back on those bookings. Also estimated room revenue that's going to the hotels. Um, we have uh, CrowdRiff. If you have ever gone to the bottom of, our, of the homepage on our website, there's all these guest generated pictures. Um, that's where that comes from. We are able to take things they submit and uh, use them in social media and whatnot. That creates a lot of content for us and it, it 
resonates and is very genuine because it's content that our visitors are, are generating for us. Um, TripAdvisor, you go to TripAdvisor, we control that page and the, the graphics, the look, the feel, um, we pay a little bit of a premium for it, but we think it has a really good return because it isn't just a bunch of random stuff, it's, it's things that we help direct. Um, in addition to that, we um, uh, do work with uh, uh, some, some other digital partners, but there's, there's quite a bit in that, uh, in that line item. Uh, the PR firm, they're relatively recent. Uh, when uh, Eric, after a couple of years of training up in Portland and PRSA memberships and all the other stuff he did, uh, tucked under, under his arm and went down to Roseburg, um, we took the opportunity to kind of cash in what we were doing locally. Uh, we were spending nine, ten thousand dollars, for example, on Cision, which is a uh, uh, PR reporting system and a thing you use to send out press releases and whatnot. And uh, we took that and some other savings and used that money to hire a public relations firm. Um, I'm, I'm sure you've noticed that in the last two, three weeks, we've gotten more television in Portland than we've seen in the last two, three years. Uh, and a lot of that, most of it is, uh, is courtesy of Lawrence PR. Uh, they're the ones that got the Zoom dance party up there, the, uh, the TV stories about the uh, guy that's making the masks for the hospital, um, the um, uh, stories about how our restaurant community is working together to help feed the folks that are in need. All that was uh, developed, pitched in place by our, our buddies up in uh, Portland. Uh, they, they've done a phenomenal job. And uh, it was one of those things where it was the right skill set at the right times. Our advertising wound down. Uh, they were able to stop in and provide <clears throat> an ongoing stream of stories demonstrating how, uh, how the people in Lincoln City pulled together even in the face of something like a pandemic and what a wonderful place this is. Uh, wayfinding project phase two, uh, that's the entry signs and then all the signage that will back that up uh, when we put a full wayfinding system in. Um, uh, operation expense for a visitor center, uh, that probably won't be happening anytime soon at 32,000. Uh, video and photography production, um, what we want to do there is build up a better photo library and build up a much, much better video B-roll library. So when we have travel writers come through, when the PR firm is pitching stories, uh, when, <clears throat> I don't know, Smithsonian Magazine or uh, something uh, with a cable channel wants to do something on Lincoln City, we've got everything we need in our back pocket. <clears throat> and we've got some of that now, but would like to invest and make it better. That's also where things like Beachside Bites would, uh, would come from. Um, <clears throat> Tempest Contracting, website hosting, 42.4. That's the folks that uh, build and maintain our website. And it's not just the website. Um, <clears throat> they do monitoring, they do testing, they do streamlining, they do keyword optimization. Uh, they're the ones that make the site attractive and get more people into it. Um, one of the dilemmas we've had for that is it actually caused the cost to increase. Over the last couple of years, we've seen our postage costs drop every hey, year. Hey, and uh, hey Ed, before you go on to postage and things, when are we going to get the new website? The new website's up and running. It's been there for a year now. The, the homepage and all of the links that it is? Hmm. The gray and the pictures from 1997? No, that's the city site. That's uh, what I'm asking. I, I, let, let me forgive you. Forgive me. I'm asking about the city. Is that in, under your purview? No, I, I, I really don't have much to do with the city site. All right. Thank you. Your site is gorgeous, by the way. I forgot about that. <laughs> thank you, Riley. I appreciate <laughs> that. It is. It's like your beard. Very good beard. Yeah, I, um, like I don't know. I was like hoping for Obi-Wan Kenobi, but everybody keeps telling me I look like Dick Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> Dick just wants to go home, Ed. No more jokes. Okay, ah, sorry. sorry. I'll, I'll keep it serious. Uh, but but just, just a little anecdotal story. Um, we had to, we're asking for an increase in postage because when the new website got up and running, our inquiries for brochures went through the roof. So 
you know, good news is more people, bad news is more brochures. Um, and then uh, marketing asset development, uh, that would be our visitor's guide, print collateral, that type of thing. We wanted to go with a magazine style visitor's guide and uh, uh, that's in the pipeline to be developed. Um, we're probably gonna hold on that for a little bit until uh, we see things where things are going and hopefully start seeing some revenue at the uh, other end of the pipeline. Ron, does that cover it? I think so, unless they have any questions. Okay, the next item we have is under um, item number 6201120, that is for events, which is $134,800. These are the events that the city actually sponsors. Uh, that they act, let me rephrase that, that they actually run. Um, they include the July 4th celebration, which is $60,000. That will actually be a savings this year because the uh, two, things took, two things took place. One, the July 4th uh, uh, city celebration was canceled. And then the second is that the governor extended the uh, emergency dec her emergency declaration to July 6th. Um, we have the glass float gala, which is $10,000. Deck the Dock, which is eight thousand uh, dollars. Various clinic programs, which are ninety-eight hundred dollars. The Fall Kite Festival is fifteen thousand dollars, and the Summer Kite Festival is twenty thousand dollars. Ed, do you want to add any more into that? Um, just, just briefly, um, the uh, the the Deck the Dock program. That's a partnership, although we're not supposed to use partnership. Uh, we worked hand in glove with the uh, the parks department on that, and uh, the idea is to kind of have enough critical mass during the holiday season to uh, start um, seeing where people come in uh, in uh, December, uh, New Year's around that time. But uh, last year we wrapped the dock. Uh, this year I've, I've been talking to Jeannie about either a uh, drive-through light display somewhere or uh, maybe having a Santa's Village type of thing. But uh, we're, we're looking to have a lot of fun with that and expand it. Um, and the um, you know Summer Kite Festival, of course, isn't going to happen. We're hoping maybe fall does, and uh, I guess we'll see. Evan, you have a question? I do, and this is slightly off topic, and I, and I don't mean to be irreverent, but when we have somebody in, working for the city with Ed's obvious expertise at marketing and promotion, um, why aren't we leveraging his knowledge and skills to do things like um, grow the promotions for the community center, which we want to see grow and, and spend a little more money on the budget? So why don't, why don't we use his expertise in I realize he's got a job, but aside from that, why don't we use his expertise in, in some other ways? You mean like how Allison's both the URA and UGU, what is it, Economic Development Director? Good even point. if it's not as a budget item, as Allison's is a formal budget item, but it, even as a, you know, take me take me to coffee and let me give me 45 minutes of yeah. your advice. I mean, I mean, that's a question. I mean, Ron and and Ed, is that what happens? Yeah, I mean, one of the things we've been trying to do is to, to kind of tear down the silos. Um, if you look closely at the, uh, the grant fund, for example, we, uh, we were proposing this year to pull $50,000 out of it and use that uh, working with economic development uh, with Allison's department. And what we wanted to do was to go out and actually recruit tourist attractions into town, you know, ra rather than sit and wait for some stuff to fall in our laps. We wanted to actually put together sales kits and visit with companies and literally pitch people to move into town. Um, so, I mean, that's one example of two departments working together. And Jeannie and I have just been doing all sorts of things. Um, Jeannie, if you're still online, you want to give them a sneak preview of the drive-in movie? I think Jeannie signed off, Ed. Oh, Jeannie signed off. Anyway, uh, we're going to be working with uh, with Jeannie, for example, 
as far as I'm concerned, it's a publicity event. It's going to give us coverage up in Portland. As far as Jeannie is concerned, it's something that's going to be a nice morale booster for the folks who live here in town. And uh, we're going to combine our nickels and dimes and resources and pull off a drive-in movie in the parking lot of the uh, community center. Yes. So uh, in, in answer to your question, yeah, we're, we're doing it already. Maybe not as much as we should. But um, a lot of the stuff I've been feeding up to the PR firm has come from Jeannie's department. It's come from the library. It's, it's come from other things in town. Um, we're all bits and pieces of the same thing. And the product that Lincoln City offers guests, in, it includes the library and the community center and everything. Right. Absolutely. Wonderful. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Ed. That's one of the reasons we don't use the term partnership anymore, because yeah. they are city activities. They're not a partnership between departments, their right. city activities, and it just becomes a matter of, uh, of how they're worked together. Okay, um, on item... Um, sorry, sorry, Ron. Kevin, do you have another question? Sorry, I forgot to take my hand down. Thanks. I'm sorry, Ron, thank you. On item number uh, 6203022, which is the grant uh, that we give out to different um, organizations that do their own um, tourism promotion. Uh, the big difference in that is that we have dropped that back down to more historical levels of 150000 instead of $200,000. Um, and then on item number 6205002, those, that's your marketing uh, and promotion budget. Ed, why don't you explain that? Yeah, the, the first one there, uh, it mentions uh, restaurant weeks and that type of thing. That's, that illustrates um, how we're making a lot of big changes over in the culinary center. Uh, traditionally, we had that as basically a cooking school and we'd talk to people a dozen at a time for uh, a hands-on course or two dozen at a time for a demo. Um, we're pushing really hard to convert that, that function into the marketing arm of the restaurant community of Lincoln City. And uh, last year we did a pilot program, uh, it's called Mac and Seas, where we featured macaroni and cheese dishes all up and down Lincoln City in kind of a restaurant week format. And it worked. The restaurants loved it. It brought people in. They got traffic. Uh, people discovered restaurants we didn't know uh, that we had in town. So uh, this year, especially with, uh, with us hiring uh, uh, an events person to fill an empty slot we've had for a while, uh, one of the things we wanted to do was to develop more of those restaurant week type things and come up with programs that drive people right in the door into the restaurants and deliver business uh, right at their place of business. Um, and, uh, but anyway, that's, uh, that's, that's what uh, that uh, $20,000 was earmarked for. Advertising and promotion opportunity fund, that's when we come across a smoking hot deal uh, it's nice to have a little money in our back pocket to take care of it. Um, for example, up in Portland, uh, one of the great big banners they put on the sides of buildings up there, uh, somebody bought it, then uh, decided not to do it. And the outdoor company said, look, we like your creative. Um, just give us enough money to print the vinyl and we'll put this up for free. You know, that's the type of thing we like to use uh, that particular fund for. Um, and then uh, marketing agency of record, that's a very funny way of saying paid media, traditional advertising. That 380 is the money we use to buy uh, television and billboards and uh, uh, magazine ads and that type of thing. Okay. Um, the next one that I have to look at is 822. Or I'm sorry, it's 6229004. Um, promotional supplies. The point that I wanted to just emphasize on that is that $66,000 of that comes from our finders keepers uh, and the purchase of the um, of the floats. And we talk an awful lot about volunteers and things like that. And we've had some tremendous success with the library and, um, and some of our recreation programs. 
but the, uh, this is another one of those where um, this program could not succeed were it not for the volunteers who are the best kept secret as to who they are. They are our float fairies. And as far as I know, there's only one person in the city who knows who all the float fairies are. And that's not me, and I don't think that's Ed either. Uh, so, um, uh, and the cost of that program is $66,000, and it comes out of the promotional supplies. If I can ask, is that, are those purchased through a variety of vendors? Yes, they or, are. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, on page 92, the only item that I wanted to really, oh, the item that I, two items I wanted to point out on this page. Uh, the first is the only capital item we have uh, is uh, for some uh, re redoing and repairing the floor up in the culinary center, which is $36,000. And then also note that the ending contingency or ending fund balance will be um, uh, less. Uh, it will be somewhere around $1,161,000 because the beginning fund balance is less. And that, that accounts for the, um, the economic aid package that the city council just approved. Okay. Great. All right, and then finally, in this one, again, I wanted to bring up the, um, uh, the long-term financial plan. Uh, and again, we see that uh, we're expecting revenues to increase at about 3%. Um, you're expect and the, um, uh, which is the uh, item number one that's highlighted. Item number two, you can see that the percentage increase of the operating expenses is higher than the revenue projections. And then uh, most significantly items number four, five, and six. Um, the downside of this is that you'll see um, uh, continued use of the fund balance uh, with the loss of the revenues from the um, uh, economic aid package. You'd actually see in 20, 24, um, where it would fall in by a half a million dollars in the red. So again, um, I have to say that while our budget is a good one, it's a conservative one, our staff does a very, very good job of uh, coming in under budget. Uh, Debbie has, and Scott have been very conservative on their revenue projections so that it comes out looking pretty good you can see that there are some long-term issues that we have to be, we have to address. Um, and, uh, and those we will continue to work on. Mr. Chair, that finishes uh, Explore Lincoln City. All right. Well, let's see. Oh, I'm sorry. One more, one more. Page 94. Yeah. Oh, percentage for the arts. Yeah. Percentage for the arts also falls under Lincoln City. As you can see, there is a capital purchase associated with art purchases of $123,388. Um, that um, has already been identified for a piece of artwork that will go at the cultural center on the outside. They have gone through, and may, some of you may have participated in it, a process of interviewing um, a... Um, uh, an artist. Uh, <clears throat> there were some questions that came up in the discussion with the city council about how much of the how much of the uh, beginning fund balance is a result of the fee that we put on our own construction project versus a contribution by the general fund. Debbie, you can correct me. I recall there was something around fifty four fifty five thousand dollars of that. Um, came from the general fund over the last two, three years. And so the question that the council had had was, um, was it time to do this art project? Uh, do we want to leave all of the funding there or do we want to transfer some of it back to the general fund? And so, um, Ed, do you want to explain it a little bit more? Or Debbie, I think you've got a statement to make in this. Um, you can see the amount from the general fund and the revenue, which is transfer from general fund. So it looks like it's sixty thousand. Yeah. But yeah, it could be transferred back to the general fund if you wanted. 
Ed, do you want to go into any information about the, the I'm, itself? I'm sorry, one, I think one of those transfers was part of the um, wanting some, oh, it had, what did it have to do with? It had to do with the PD building. There was a specific transfer was made for that. Yards? I think that was the 10,000. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm not aware of uh, a transfer from the PD building. Um, the, um, the, the project is um, meant to be something that creates an iconic piece for, uh, for Lincoln City. This, this came on the heels of the uh, Public Arts Master Plan that was reviewed and approved by City Council. And we're looking to create something that would be uh, dramatic enough to make someone want to pull off 101 to check it out. We want it to be uh, interactive. We want it to be a gathering place. Uh, we wanted to we wanted to say something very positive about our town and, and relate back to its history. Um, there was uh, we had I think it was 18 different artists reply to the uh, RFQ when it went out. Uh, that was winnowed down after looking at the uh, the written submissions to uh, five artists, and they were brought into town and interviewed and uh, the. Evaluation by the Arts Committee, the uh, Meet the Artist session we had at City Hall, and then the online presentations and online voting all, pay, all pointed to the same guy. Um, uh, it's uh, Pete, and why am I blanking on his last name? Um, he's the guy that did the interactive piece that's in front of Powell's Market up in uh, uh, Portland, where you can, Pete Beeman where uh, you can push on it and things move around and whatnot. Um, he does some amazing engineering and uh, everything he does will have a crank or a wheel or something that will make the sculpture move around. Um, you know, I think we were lucky to get the world-class artists that we did to uh, pay attention to Lincoln City. I uh, was really excited when Pete was chosen. Uh, that said, we're in very interesting times right now um, where we're probably going to be seeing things like the visitor center pushed off for a long time. And uh, I don't know if we're going to see a pause on this one or not. Um, if we do, I'm hoping it's a pause and we can eventually move forward with it. Thank you. Okay, that does it for economic, or I mean for Explore Lincoln City. Wonderful, thank you, Ron. Kevin, you have a question? Yeah, Visitor Center. I've, I'm not a part of the city council, so the only time I get a chance to talk about it is this once a year when we're doing this. So You're what's the status council? since last, I thought last year that we were gonna see something happening and now it's a year later and we haven't seen anything happening. Just well, well what, what, what you're witnessing is uh, state, uh, city government talking to state government who's talking. Ah, to, there you go. Uh, what we need to do is to gain control of D River Wayside and have it go from being a state park to a city park. And uh, there's also some federal, uh, Ron, what's the term, uh, district water something wildlife designations. But... Uh, there's a whole thing that's been laid out to where all that would get cleared out. The state park regulations would go away. It would come within the uh, Lincoln City Park system. At that point, we'd build an absolutely magnificent visitor center and take advantage of the one and a half million people a year that go through the wayside. But um, circumstances as they are, that cart's going to get pushed down the road a couple of years. Thanks. Ms. Casper? Yeah, before we, we leave for the evening, um, yes. I, maybe for next time or, or sometime in the future, on page 93, you were talking about you're busy doing some things to address these declines. And I, I guess I'm not clear as to why the estimated decline is so radical over the next four years or five years or eight years. To the $500,000 in the red? Yeah. Yeah. The primary reason for that decline is the biggest jump in that is because of the economic aid package. Okay. I thought this was all put together before we did that. Yeah. This budget was. So. So it's been adjusted to, or 
in the blue that I've got up on the screen, it was adjusted to reflect the um, uh, uh, the impact of that uh, economic aid package. So then in the same respect, because I put in a, a call, I asked a question at our League of Oregon City meeting about yeah. PERS matching funds and they were supposed to get back to me. So I know we're budgeting to pay to pay this money, is that correct? We are. Theoretically, okay. So suppose the state comes along now and, and answers us and says, oh, sorry, that's not gonna happen. Then we will come in way under budget. Okay. Yeah, we've, we've contacted, Debbie contacted the state and asked them about this. And the, the information that we had is that for the money we've already paid, a half a million dollars, that's set. They're going to match that. Um, however, the future money, which we were looking to pay in about August, uh, they did not really have a definitive answer on whether or not that's going to be funded or affected by uh, the shortfalls that the state may be experiencing. So we don't really have an answer. We're still budgeting so that if we can go forward with that, the money's there. But if uh, the state were to back away from that, then um, of course that expense would then be, uh, wouldn't occur. Well, there's a there's a possibility of a plus 1.5 million dollar where we would still go, we would still go through regardless of their matching um, that would if be, they, go ahead debbie if they don't match i would certainly want to bring it back to council because that's a that's a that's a really big reason to do to that's do this because that's a lot of money um right. the other thing is once once we pay the money and we and we had told them that we would pay it in august once we pay the money and they do the match and put it into first fund um then it, regardless of what the state does they can't take it back so as long as they don't take it before august we should be okay mm -hmm. So, so say that again, as long as they don't take it <laughs> so back. When we send them. So when, so if they, if they haven't said we're going to cancel this program by August and we send them the 1.5 million and they do the match and put it into the per side account, then it's out of the state's hand. Okay. So. And they can't touch will, it anymore. We will, know, we will know before August whether or not they will match the maximum money and if they don't then we the city still have the opportunity to say hey wait a second maybe 1.5 isn't what we want to do yeah okay can we send the 1.5 before august you know we probably could i could probably send it uh first of july but I, I, yeah but that, and 1. maybe that's a good idea first, yeah, and then July 15th, they say, no, we're not going to match it, and we just sent 1.5 without it being matched, right? Um, no, because once they get our money, they'll match it and turn it over to PERS. But I would, before I actually send it to them, I'll call them and say, so the match is still on and we'll get it, right? Yeah. I'll get that in writing before I actually send it. <laughs> because I'd be, I'd be mad if I sent them out money and they didn't give me my 500000 <laughs> We'd be very mad. Yeah. Susan? Yeah, we'd all be mad. Sorry. Yes, Susan. I have one quick question before we go. Um, on the memo that Ron sent um, prior to this meeting, um, on the franchise fees, it says that the Charter Spectrum franchise expired 11 26 208. What's the missing digit? Uh, let me find it here. And then Northwest Natural says franchise expired in 2016. Yes, that's one we need to move forward with. We found when we did the charter franchise that your, as long, your franchise continues even though it hasn't been renewed, but it's one we need to deal with. And then, um, Franchise expiration is 2028. 28, thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right, anything else, guys? Any other, do we have to hold a public, open public hearing oh, or anything? Um, let me check real quick. I checked just a few minutes ago and there was not any, there are no public comments. Okay, we uh, need to, 
Okay. Do I have to do anything else? No, sir. No. All right. Well, thank you all for participating today. I, I really appreciate it. And we will see you at the next meeting. When is that, Ron? Yeah. Gabby, do you remember the date? It's, two, uh, yeah, two weeks from now. Uh, and you want to start at five again? Yeah. Well, I'm assuming. let's ask if everybody is okay with five o'clock again. Yeah. Yeah. That would be uh, May, Monday, May the 18th, two weeks. All right. Well, that would be great. I don't see any nay so i'll see you guys in two weeks five o'clock thank you all very much have a great night this bye. meeting is adjourned bye thank you bye, bye.